Fuck that baby, why they think I'm a problem? Shop on the page, you thinkin' you gon' solve it I feel like Harden back up in the rocket See the red light, no, I ain't stoppin' Truly askin' for a 30 to pop Alright, uh, what's poppin', what's poppin'? This Ed West Media coming at you with the New Era Podcast Andy D. Gastino with my boy Sleepy, MTV Line. It's Pablo, it's Pablo. Uh, that's right. Uh, just a little background on all of us, you know, uh, just a group of friends who've been heavy in the anime for a minute. And I just decided, you know what, let's just start this YouTube shit. We see a lot of niggas that, that be getting a cloud off this shit with like, the shit they're doing, we could be doing the same thing, sort of like, might as well start now. I've been an anime fan for a good 12, 15 years now. Started with Naruto, Naruto, then One Piece, Bleach, Bleach uh, you know, all the three, all the big all the three. three. Eventually, it's just a uh, diversion to every other anime, genre, seinens. I read manga, I read manga, everything. Uh, I'm gonna let my boys introduce themselves now. Yes, sir. Who going first? Uh, you go first, you go first. I fucking know it is. My name's Sleepy, you know. First anime ever introduced, you know. Dragon Ball Z, that's a banger, it's an OG. But, but, you know, you know went, went to One, to one piece, piece, and that's a banger from now on. Always, always on that, that manga, manga, best manga, manga ever. ever. But then, uh, I'm usually I'm more of like a psychological like thriller type of anime guy. guy. That's why I like I Death like Note, Bardster, Psychopaths, those types of anime, you, you know. And you know, it's like, it's kind of the vibe these days, you feel me? Back then it wasn't, but now it's popping, so that's what we do with this shit. So yeah, that's my take. So I'll pass it off to Lion, and he gonna do his intro. Hey man, it's MTV Lion out here, bro. Man, I, me, I've been an anime fan for a minute type shit, you know what I mean? Like, I can't even say, like, how long, because, like, I've always just been growing up on anime. I'm saying, like, first anime I watched was, like, Astro Boy type shit as a kid. And I started really getting into anime as, what's it called, you know, Dragon Ball Z, the GOAT. Dragon Ball, first of all, type shit. And then Dragon Ball Z and all that. And then I, I'd say one of my favorite animes when I was growing up has to be, like, Dragon Ball and, like, Inuyasha. See, let's see, I'm, uh, throughout high school and shit, you know, I watch all types of animes like that. Basically, today we're gonna be talking about One Piece and all that. That's really the main topic, but, like, yeah, it's a little background story on all of us. We really fuck with anime and all that. Really in the anime community like that, so, you know, that's why we're trying to make a podcast, you know, connect with all y'all. All right, all right. All right. And that's, and that's us. us. So, so, so now I'm just gonna explain what the new era podcast, uh, podcast, podcast gonna be like. like. Uh, every uh, episode, episode, we're just gonna get in, in talk about uh, recent, recent One Piece one news. news. Uh, the chapter, leaks, any possible leaks, theories, the episode, the anime, you know, everything related to One Piece. That's what the New Era podcast is for. We're going to eventually branch out to other animes and other podcasts, but right now we're primarily focusing uh, the New Era. Like We named it like that because it's a One Piece podcast, and that's what we're making our main focus right now. So yeah, man, let's get into it. Like uh, First uh, first topic I want to get into is the anime right now, you know, uh, 1028 episode 1028 just came out yesterday so i just want to ask y'all how y'all feel about the episode how you feel about the anime in general you like it you don't like it you like the direction it's heading towards uh, i'm gonna let lion head up first uh, hey bro i ain't gonna lie i don't know if y'all niggas saw what i sent to the group chat today but that animation was crisp on that episode monica that shit was like some like some movie quality type shit like i felt like i was really watching like some like some like what's it called your name type shit you know what i mean like some real ass like Anime, anime, uh, animated quality. But that shit was fire. Uh, I look it on like towards the end, like you was playing the music and all that shit, like the happy music, I, and making it like seem like Luffy won the fight type shit. Like niggas who didn't read the manga, they probably would have thought that was the end of it and all that shit. But this, I don't want to spoil. But like niggas just don't know what's gonna be happening next. You know, I was gonna say the same thing with the music, but not for the same reason. Like I just didn't like. like the vibe of that turn like OST at that specific time. Nah, I feel that. Could have been something else. Yeah, I want like more tension type vibe. I don't know if you remember the OST where like, like fucking Luffy stops off a nigga from stopping out lot type shit. I just goes like pitch silence type shit. Like, I kind of wanted that type shit to happen. But I don't know. That's just me. But the animation, they're clearly working on it. They're clearly grinding on that shit. But I don't know how long it's going to last. So that's about it. I don't know. But they're putting yeah, me, me. Yeah, me, it's pretty yeah, much the same thing. thing. Animation, animation is looking crisp, crisp everything, everything looking proper, proper right now. Right now. Uh, my, my only problem so far is like they're they're, they're kind, kind of overdoing, overdoing over the colors, colors right now. Like, like there's some, some like like overall, overall the episode is better, better than what we got in the manga, but there are some panels where like the manga clearly did this better. 
like uh, the scene where Luffy actually first unlocks uh, Conqueror's Cody. I'm like, that was clearly like just the darker aspect of the manga worked way better. Like the flower shade that they're doing, all the yellow flowers. Like, I get it. It's meant to represent Hockey Boom. Oh, you don't want to but we don't we even don't see like see, the like, proper the impact anymore because like just like, just, like the color the just color blinding just everything around, around it. Like we don't get to see like like like, like just how just rough it was, like how rough the fight was with Luffy in the manga. Like it just felt more rough, more like like he felt bad. Everybody felt badder in the fight. Like these guys are fighting for their lives right now. The anime just too many colors. Like like I need them to tone down the colors. Like uh, for example, like how they did it with Kaido. Like when he used the conquerors, like that red, dark red aspect. That was popular. Like you, you, you kind of felt like a threat. Like, like, like he looked like, like a demon, demon. straight out of hell. That's what I want to see more. Of. Like I, I get it. It's meant to be his hockey booming, but just like yes, less yellow flower from now on. That's like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. Like I fuck with the flower shit with the conqueror's hawk and all that, but I'm gonna tell you what I don't fuck with. You know that episode where I think it's like the second newest or third newest where Zora like interviews like Ashura to yeah, like yeah. cut uh Kaido with like the dinosaur star. I do not fuck with the yellow aura on yeah, Zoro. I sure should have been purple. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I wanted that OG purple classic aura that he had when he was fighting the CP9. So I don't know. That's just me. I feel like yellow. If anyone would have would have to have yellow, it would be like Sanji or some shit. Yeah. Like I don't know. Like, that that go on. I don't. Sanji. I don't get why they keep switching colors so often now. Like in the anime, like Luffy has gone from yellow, gold, red, every single color. It's like every so is Zoro like. And like, why are they all switching colors? Yeah, like, is like it not meant to represent like a specific type of hockey, like that like, represent that person's willpower? Like, like look at Kaido's. His is like a dark red aspect. I like it needs it to stay like that. Too. It gets yeah. purple too, oh, but that's okay. Like, I I just needed to stay like that. Like, but for like Luffy, it's been changing too much. For Zoro, it's been changing often too. I'm like, what's with all the colors? Like, just stick to every character having one color aspect it just works better like that i ain't gonna lie i did not see that shit until you like you started talking about it like yeah. i don't know personally though it looks fire as fuck though you know what i'm saying i don't know the zord one I, that really bugged me though like the yellow i just didn't like the animation was sick don't get me wrong like yellow the animation is top tier right now right now yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never been better. Better. last week's episode too got me turned when when luffy did that little that little fucking side glide on the water and shit and just punch kai bro that's oh yeah, yeah, yeah too nice that was, that was, but nah uh, with the anime that's, anime, all, that's tight. all tight like, we get it into the manga or just stick with anime no no oh, we're boy, getting the yeah. manga now i just want before we uh, move to 10 50 i just want to ask like y'all feel confident confident about the anime right now uh, you feel like it's going to surpass uh, the quality we had in one on the manga or you feel like it's just going to stay either same level or a little lower bro look how good as the years go by it has to get better yeah, 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 yeah. It has to. Like, it's just person, a yeah. Yeah. person, I feel like you want to know the anime has been like flippy floppy. Like some, like some scenes, like I get it. They didn't have the budget because they focused so heavy on other episodes, like ten, fifteen, and like the recent episodes. So some scenes felt like slideshow, basically. But overall, I feel that. But surpassed, surpassed the manga. So after they dropped that new uh, film, film red. And like, yeah, yeah, their yeah, budget's yeah. gonna be thrown out the roof now, bro. Them niggas made yeah. mad money off that shit. First day, oh, yeah, they made like 7.7 yeah. 7 million or some shit. Like, yeah, yeah. first day, too. It was too. like, what, the second, second or third, third, third uh, highest uh, uh, anime opening, like, movie, movie opening? Yeah, bro, that shit was, that shit was uh, crazy. JJK. Uh, and, like, I was just uh, thinking, like, you can't have this crisp of quality and then when Awano ends, you can't just go back to, like, regular. It's just gonna yeah, look yeah. weird, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just yeah. have, you have to, like, you have to keep the up. it was, like, and, uh, uh, okay, Kyler. Island. Yeah. Uh, like, like, so many, so many people, people are gonna get turned off from that. Yeah, that. Uh, but don't get me wrong. Whole Kyler Island, like the quality was good, but like it was, it was just such, it, it was such a big it's such a big jump now. Like the quality yeah. now is just so crazy. I'm like I'm sorry, but you you can't you can't go back now. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like, like that like Queen, that queen uh, uh, when Queen introduced the uh, uh, Onigashima, like that felt like straight out of One Piece Stampede. Yeah, that's 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 like, that was amazing. Was so amazing. Like that episode, jeez, I was actually shocked they had that type of budget. Nah, but like, yo, film red. Whole point is to introduce non One Piece fans to even pull up and watch. Yeah. So once those new One Piece fans come and they see some bullshit animation on the next part, they're gonna get turned off. So that's why I had. Well, hold up, brother. We're going to talk about no. We're going to talk about film right now. Just uh, we're saving that for later, a little later. 
Right, right now, let's get in the 1056. Uh, obviously, spoilers for anyone that's not caught up. So, if you're not caught up, here's a chance to head out. So, uh, how y'all feel about the chapter? Any theories about how it's gonna go? Like, let's start with first of the beginning. Uh, the uh, Robin Law uh, finding the pawn glyph. I'm like, how do you guys feel about feel about that? Found the pawn glyph not on the ground. Yeah, I fuck it. I really do fuck it. I feel it was just kind of like me. I felt like it could have been like we could have had like more like um uh, what's it called uh more information about it. We could have spent more time, you know, within those scenes. Cause like I know I know it's just kind of like jumping like kind of towards the end of the chapter. Like you know what I'm saying? But like you know how they they left and all that shit. Like we didn't even know anything of like you know any like details or anything of what happened and like what not. You know what I'm saying? Like they kind of just found it and they kind of just left. You know what I'm saying? So I wish yeah, we had yeah. like some more like some more some more screen time. That's what the word I'm trying to look for. Some more screen time with that shit. But other than that, that shit was it was lit. Personally, I thought we were gonna stay in Wano a little bit longer. Like I thought they're gonna explore, like you know what I'm saying? The underground whatever it was, yeah, kingdom or whatever. Time, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Cause I saw a lot of people making theories and all that shit. So I'm like, yo, like we actually might you know, we might stay at Wano a little bit longer, but I guess I guess not. <laughs> But, I don't know if we're trying to head out of Wano because of like the words that Oda said about this shit ending in like three years. I don't know if that's the reason. Because me personally, I'd feel like we have to stay just a tad bit long just to at least see like a glimpse of what this Pluton shit is, bro. Because like we just find an underground like place, like some Atlantis looking at shit. And then they're saying that there's a whole fucking pluton in there that was supposed to be an alabasta but it's actually yeah, yeah. like that's kind of revealed that's like big ass like revealing point it's a huge reveal so are we just gonna leave that unless something else trying to swoop in like i'm sure robin and law gonna talk to luffy and see what's going on but the thing, but thing is we we know how luffy is he doesn't care but like the how you but just the way you brought up like alabasta where it was supposed to be and everything it just brings up the topic like what is frankie's role now if yeah, there's yeah. already a fully built Pluton in Wano, what's the point of Frankie having memorized the blueprints now? Like, I don't know where Oda's heading with this. Like, I always thought I don't like, know like, the end. Pluton, like, already built. Maybe it's in scraps and shit, because okay. it's so That cool. might be it. Because me, I always believe that at the end, Luffy would just have to use all three ancient weapons to destroy the red line. And, you know, eventually the all blue's going to be formed by all the forces connected. But now, like, I, and I thought Frankie was supposed to be the one that helps him build it because he has the blueprints memorized. But now it just seems like Frankie's not even needed no more. Facts, facts. But like, honestly, you know, it's funny that you brought that shit up about finding the Asian weapons to destroy the Grand Line and have the all blue connected with all the seas and shit. Yeah, yeah. Because that means that with all the, with the monster trio, you know, Luffy wants to be Pirate King. The sword wants to be the greatest swordsman, and Sanji wants to be, he wants to find all blue. Bro, Sanji's goal isn't really grind, bro. It's a grind of other people, because it's not really him finding the all blue. It's just him at the end, when they destroy the grand line, he's going to get the all blue and find it and see. So, I don't even know. It just seems kind of like, you know, there's no grind in there, no sweat and tears. That's all I'm saying. It right, just depends on what it takes. I'm not here to hate, though. Just funny, funny. All right. All right. Let's move on a little later in the chapter. How do you feel about like Luffy and Law and kids like last possible interaction? Like taking in like these guys. Are, Luffy and Law have been in the lines for the last decade since Punk Hazard, and this might be the last time we see them interact. And this might be like the last time in a while we see them interact with Kid. I need I need to see Kid power up. That's all I'm saying. I want to pass it. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna miss Kid. Definitely gonna miss Kid. Him and uh, the relationship they formed, it was definitely, um, uh, it, it was funny, it was jokes and all that, you know? The jokes here and there, and just, like, the fighting and all that. Mm-hmm. Definitely gonna miss it, but, you know, we're gonna, uh, we gotta move on and... Uh, nah, for real, though, because Kid was, like, top five. Like, I'm not saying it was, it's kind of harsh, but I kind of have to say he moved down to, like, top ten. Because, bro, they were hoeing this guy, bro. I kept waiting for this dude to just power up on some crazy shit. But, like... like I don't, I don't know. I don't know what they're see, see, with, with I don't get how people can still say, like, Kid has had, like, so much portrayal, like, and so much feats. Like, he has more feats than any other supernova except Blackbeard and Luffy and Law, basically. Like, this guy, as soon as he came into the New World, he, he's the only one that fought almost every other Yonko. He's fought every other Yonko except Blackbeard. 
He came, he came into Big Mom's big territory, territory injured one of the commanders, and then forced, forced that commander to give them the information, information. Then, then got, got, out, got alive. out alive. He fought, he fought the Red Hair Pirates, pirates got, got out alive. alive. Fought Kaido, got out alive. Fought Big Mom again, again, and won. Yeah, I get, yeah, it. I get like, it. Like his, his like his powers, his powers like, like it might not seem like he knows how to use it the best. But we can't just underestimate like how deadly his powers can be. Like that damn punk attack was deadly. That's what I'm saying. I underestimate. I'm just saying like the. Evolution, evolution to its full potential, full potential is a bit too slow. slow. Yeah, it's but it's cool. you, you gotta remember, not everybody's like Luffy. Luffy is the main character. People need Luffy. They like, like a kid from Jump. They did. They did. That. And Kid was actually it wasn't even supposed to be live. Like a lot back then, I always said like he was really trying to put emphasis on Kid and Luffy at the time. So Kid holds like a higher like value. So you think that he would also have like a Sort of like a, I don't know, I don't want to use my hero academia here, but like a Deku and like Baku go fucking rivalry type shit, or like some Vegeta go type shit, you know? I mean, but even in my hero, Deku's clearly head and shoulders above Baku go right now. It's a thing nah, where Luffy is still showing up. Yeah, hey, he's still showing up, but the thing is, that's the same thing, that's the same thing. kidding me. Yo, Kid, Yo, Kid was, was very cool. Behind the scenes, shit. Like, I don't no, see no, but not even Banks. I don't but see nothing. But look, 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 it's not just behind the scenes, but look at it this way. Without Kid, Kid didn't take all those heavy damage hits, hits from Big Mom, Law's not winning that fight. Law's like, Kid took the brunt of the damage from Big Mom. And he was taking a lot of damage, too. This guy's a tank. Like, people forget that he literally, like, his fighting stuff is reckless as shit, but he'd be surviving. He was taking hits from Kaido, from Big Mom. He's straight up eating them. I kept fighting, fighting like it. His durability, his durability is, insane. is insane. He's a brawler. He's definitely a brawler. I mean, but I mean, that's, but just, that's like just, the just like the way they, they like, like, you know how Oda would be saying, saying like, like, if One Piece one characters were in real life, like, like where they would be, like, what country yeah, would be. Yeah. They said that, that kid, kid would be from, from like, Scotland. Scotland. And, you know, like, you know, from Scotland, you know, them drunk, like, you know, them drunk and fight type shit, bras and shit, parts and shit, like, all the stereotype shit like that. Like, hey, that's his kind of fight style, you know? Yeah. So, he takes the damage and he brings it right back. But I just need to see a bit more because it's too. How can I say? I'm not. I'm not downgrading it. I'm just saying it's too basic. It's like okay. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Before. You know, before you had gear four, his attacks were too basic. We knew what was gonna happen. Like, like one, two jet pistol, fucking third gear, big ass dry pistol. Like it's too. It's too like stared there. Not so you at one point I was also losing faith in Kid, but he showed out to me this arc. And also like uh, I like how he's he seems to be more prepared to find the one piece than Luffy. Luffy, like the thing I don't like about him is always seems like all he does to achieve his dreams is fight. He does nothing else but fight. He's not actively looking for clues to find the one piece and I just always feels annoying to me like it's like you don't want your dream, you're just expecting it to all fall in your head. You're expecting Robin to be there. To read all the chronicles for you, you're expecting to you find all the real chronicles. He's actively looking. Exactly. He's finding it in his own way. But all like, but think about like, look at kid, look at what kid is doing. He's uh, he's looking for the leads on a burn on the man with the burn mark, the man that was scarred by fire or whatever the translation is. Like this guy's actually actively out here searching for leads that can find the one piece. Kid is a much smarter uh, pirate, like the way he looks for the one piece. And same way with Law. And I also did like the way Law. Like gave him, him the, the pony uh, uh, uh marking like right? that. That, that, felt, that that was real for him. Like he's like, yeah, this guy yeah, definitely deserves, deserves it. And it just like it really builds up that rivalry that the three have. Where they're like, yeah, I can yeah, give I can kid, kid the pony I'm, I'm still gonna be the one that finds the one piece. Like they don't mind sharing. It's like Whitebeard and Roger. Where like they don't mind sharing the shit between each other. Whitebeard gave Odin to Roger. Roger just gave the pony glove to kid. Like I like that type of. Camaraderie between, between those three, three. like these three, these three, they may be they rivals, rivals, but like, but, like I love their relationship. relationship. How you feel, Lion? Nah, fuck with it. It's like a love hate relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like they're all like they're all like trying to they're all trying to eat, but at the same time they're all trying to like compete with each other at the same time, which I which I really fuck with. Yeah. But like, do you think that after, after all this shit, they're just gonna go their separate ways, or are they really just gonna start pushing? Because, I, because I, we have to realize they're all pirates at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Like when it really comes down to crunch time, so like, yo, we need to seize the golden opportunity and they're the obstacle ahead, they're gonna have to go through the obstacle. So I don't know what time we're gonna get it when they actually start, like, you know, clashing. Maybe the end time, I don't know. I feel like you probably see whatever. whatever. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was just, it's just some little, I was just, because on that topic, I could probably see Kid 
and yeah, maybe beefing like more pref- more like uh luffy maybe law too but like law i don't really see law beefing like luffy like you know what i mean like yeah, some like real heated type sh- yeah but i could definitely see right. kid like on some like you know some anger type shit fighting for for whatnot yeah back to you yeah i was just gonna say like i definitely see like more after like i see them because they already picked the, uh, the raps they're gonna take Kid, uh, yeah, kids, uh, kids uh, I'm pretty sure he won the coin toss between him and Luffy's like he's going Middle East. Luffy's probably going North East and uh, uh, Law's going South East. So they're all going different paths. But I feel like, like the the one piece, all these paths are going to converge. And there's not that many islands left. Obviously, there's there's the arcs, the saga. This is the last saga. There's not that many islands left. So like in like two islands, they're all converging at one point. It's going to be like Dofi said, a fucking throne war. Kid, Law, Blackbeard, Shanks, if he's still alive at the time, uh, Luffy, all of them just fighting for supremacy at that point. And at that point, I feel like Kid is definitely going to be way more aggressive than Law will be. Like, Law's not the type to just see confrontation. He's going to play it smarter. He's going to try to finesse his way to the win. But Kid is definitely going to be more aggressive. He wants to, like, show up Law and uh, Luffy. Like, he always wants to show them up. He thinks he's a better pirate than them. But yeah, that's definitely how I feel like it's gonna go down. I mean, I just feel like he got more motivation than Law when it comes to this whole pirate king thing. Yeah, the Law's information was like motivation was mostly like just breaking down Doflamingo because of his shitty ass fucking childhood <laughs> and shit. And then he had no choice but to go and get Kaido because Dofi was working under Kaido. You feel me? So yeah. after Kaido, what is Law really like? What's his motivation? Like, what is he really trying to do? So. He might just be like a guy that's just riding on his solo thing on some Mihawk shit. Mm-hmm. Like not really trying to like, you know, pursue a goal, but just, you know, it's just still trying to live freely. But I don't know. Alright. So yeah, now we can move on to the next part of the chapter, the Cross Guild. Uh the uh, which was founded by the GOATs, the bombastic buggy D clown, you know, greatest finesse of all time. How y'all feel about that? How do you think it all came to be? Like, do you think me, uh, shit, me, Hulk just, just serves him, or just something else happened? I ain't glad when I first saw that shit. That shit was that shit caught me off guard. But like, back to like Sleepy, cause yo, sleep, yo, me and Sleepy, we were talking about. It. I'm like, yo, bro. I'm like, there's theories and all that shit. I'm like, yo, cause we, we were putting, we were kind of stringing theories and all that shit. Then I'm like, yo, what if me, Hulk yeah. was under? buggy and that's why he got you know unless we got yonko and all that shit and they're all just think about that and all that but then when we saw them like oh shit bro like this shit actually came you know came true type shit that shit was just really crazy and all that but like i definitely think well if i'm not mistaken it was like it was forged with mihawk as well right mihawk was yeah but i definitely feel like mihawk's just kind of like uh probably using them you know what i'm saying just using them to benefit him off or some shit because he did get the uh what's called the warlord shit got this banner whatever and you know Mihawk's by himself. I'm pretty sure he can handle himself by himself. But I feel like he just kind of just, you know, what I'm saying, team up with Buggy. He probably has some other motives or some shit got going on. So he probably could benefit off off him or some shit. Yo, Yo honestly, honestly, that's actually I didn't never looked at it that way with like Mihawk trying to find like his own go through Buggy type shit. Because you never really do know what Mihawk be thinking because he's a stone cold killer. But yeah. the thing is. I want to bring back something that happened in Marineford when Mihawk was talking about Luffy. Because you know how Luffy, you know, he was getting main, he was getting, he was getting enemies that were fr- uh, like, that are friends now, like Crocodile, that was an enemy back then, Alabasta, now they were like teaming up in Marineford and fighting alongside each other. And like other people and shit, you got Bo and Hancock before, you know, mm-hmm. after it's Luffy, but now he's in love with Luffy. You know, he makes like enemies into friends and shit. You can even say the same shit with the alliance with Law and Kid, even though they're not like Fred friends, but they like they're fighting alongside each other. You feel me? It's Luffy's greatest power. So that's the thing. Mihawk's in the same shit. He's like the greatest power. He, like I don't know if he with the other comparison, what if he said it was his abilities or some shit? He said his greatest power is like the power to like you don't know, bring in and foes into allies. Yeah, foes into allies. You know what's crazy? That I feel like that has something to do with like some sort of conquerors hockey within. To actually bring in and draw people within you because yeah. it's a conqueror's thing. You're supposed to conquer the things around yeah, you. And conquerors you know, we know are just naturally charismatic. They, that's they what draw doing. in people to them. But you know what's crazy? Buggy's on the same wave, bro. I'm telling I knew you, that's Buggy's where you were heading, the, and I love it, bro. I'm trying to tell you, like, every time we see this dude, 
he's in the like of he's in a pinch. He's in he's backed up on the ropes. He doesn't know what to do. His enemies are trying to get him. He just does some bullshit just to get them on his side. I don't know how he does it, but he just has that. I feel at first I thought it was a coincidence and it was just like a comedic gag or some shit. But now I'm really thinking it's his hidden ability type shit. Kind of yeah, like yeah. Luffy's. I don't know. Nah, me personally, I, I I love where you're going with this. Like, I've always loved Buggy as a character. I just love the way he, like, like they, everyone said, he fails upwards. Like, he'll find a situation where he's failing, but end up making the best out of it. Like, this guy's the greatest finesse in the series. And, like, he like he's one of those characters that I feel like, unironically, he could have conquered Saki. Just not a lot. Like, this guy's very charismatic. He's a, yeah. And he's a very, like, People underestimate his intelligence. This guy's smart. He came off an entire organization of bounty hunters and everything, and now he came over the cross scale. Like he's a smart pirate, and he's charismatic. He's able to finesse people to follow him and actually worship the ground he walks on. This guy, if he had conquered hockey, I wouldn't even be mad at it. I'd actually it understand why he has. It, makes sense. it actually makes sense because yo, know, just like Luffy, he turns foes into allies. Like he's I mean, he has a like lot that. of shit. he has a lot of stuff in his credit. He's yeah. part of Roger's crew at one point. Mm-hmm. Oh, he grew up with Shanks. Quote, unquote, rival to Shanks, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Grow with Shanks. And you know where Shanks is right now, right? You know what he do. And you know what Buggy do. Now, people are like, oh, Buggy, he's just a clown. You know, he's just met for comedy and shit. You know, he's weak. You know, you know, you know, he's 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 back then. Sure. This, guy's this guy's on a plan. plan. He's on a mission. He's on a he's steady pace plan. plan. People don't, don't understand, understand it. This guy's yeah, still, still trying to find. Fine. What's what's the guy's, guy's name again? Captain John. Captain John. Captain John. Captain John bro. He been bro. How how, how long, long is that, bro? Because he's like forty right now. So he's been he's trying to find that shit since yeah, yeah. for decades. <laughs> for decades, bro. He's on a consistent wave, man. And that's, that's what I like about him, man. He, that's he's what not like saying. every other pirate just aiming for the One Piece. Like he understands. Like Buggy's like I'm not gonna say he's like Shanks. But like, but, like, he's, he's kind of like, like Chess in the way he understands what it takes to be Pirate King. And he's like, he's like I'm going to remove myself from that. I'm not Roger. Roger. I want to aim for something else. else. Something, something where, where I can be I the can greatest at that. Like, he's doing his own thing, and I love that about him. And it's the same thing with Black Pirates, too. I feel like those OG characters from that time, they each got their own unique way of motivation. And they do it smart. Kind of like comparison to Luffy. You know how they're comparing Luffy to Black Dude? Luffy tries to find the One Piece through freedom by like on a carefree way. You know how Bleach and Ichigo just get stronger each fight he does? It's like some bullshit like that. For Luffy, it's kind of the same, but it's in a way that he's more free. His definition of being free is just, you know, freeing other people from disasters or doing what he feels is righteous. And in that way, he ends up fighting blessings that leads him into the one piece closer and closer. Black Beard, he's more of like an eyes, you know, from like Bleach. Like, he's actually planning that shit. Like, he's been patient. He's so patient. People don't understand how smart this guy is. They think he's just like, because he gets goofy at times, you know? He does goofy shit, but they don't, they don't understand, understand how, how smart this guy is. He's a real pirate. This guy's really on a mission. Right, like, um, I also want to just talk about like how I feel like the cross scales came to be. Like, I've, I've heard a lot of people saying like this discredits Mihawk now because he's serving under Buggy. Okay, first of all, he's clearly not serving Buggy. Like, people don't understand Mihawk's character, I feel like. A lot of people don't understand his character. They just feel like... They, they, just they just feel like he's there, there like, like, and that he doesn't know doesn't what he wants. wants. Mihawk knows exactly what he wants. He wants, he wants, the, thrill. He wants the thrill. He wants the challenge. Like, we know how we, we saw he was when the rulers were abolished. I'm finally feeling some excitement for the first time in a minute. Mihawk is a character, which I've always said, he suffers through success. This guy's entire life is, he's been training in the sword his entire life. He's fought battle after battle until finally he reached the pinnacle of swordsmanship and he was bored. No one was left to challenge him. His only rival, Shanks, couldn't give, give him the satisfaction, him satisfaction of true defeat. Because me, I'm, I'm a believer, believer of Shanks equals me. Bonafide, bonafide, bonafide equals in every way. I feel like every one of their legendary duels and in a draw. And I feel like that's why Mihawk hates it. He wants someone that can actually give him the thrill of possible death. And that's why he's waiting for Zoro to be stronger than Shanks. So yeah, Mihawk is clearly not serving on the buggy. Like I said, he's a suffering to success. So right now he's just bored. And I call you, and I call you right now. You yeah. saying end of time one piece epilogue? Zoro is stronger than Shanks all time. Yeah, he's definitely stronger than Shanks all time. Ah. Wait, what did you just say? This guy said. End time one piece epilogue at the end of time when series is over. 
Zoro is stronger, stronger than Shanks. Than Shanks. I mean, it was basically confirmed by, by Oda. Because Oda literally wrote in that book. Mihawk is waiting for someone stronger than Shanks. And we know Zoro is going to be his final opponent. Zoro has to be stronger than Shanks. And we know Zoro is going to surpass all the other right men in existence. Like just how his narrative works, like in these type of stories. The next generation always surpasses the old. Naruto surpassed Hashirama. Sasuke surpassed Madara. Luffy is going to surpass Roger. Zoro is going to surpass Rayleigh. But I feel like Rayleigh is prime. When when does that when that fight happen? Yeah, the Zoro and Mia. Okay, me I feel like was I, I I also like like the way Whitebeard said it. After they find the One Piece, that's when the final war actually going to happen. So how I feel like after they find the One Piece, after they defeat the Black Eater Pirates, that's when the Mia versus Zoro fight happens. So yeah, but like I'm, I'm just gonna go back to my point. Was saying like. Mihawk has Mihawk been so bored for so long, long that, that like he like, probably he just probably agreed to Buggy's like, like. But first of all, first Buggy definitely, definitely came to him, him, him and Crocodile, offering them to form an alliance to protect him from the Marines, because Buggy Buggy's knows his weaknesses. weaknesses. And, and Mihawk, Mihawk definitely, definitely agreed to it. He's like, I'm bored. This, this sounds interesting. interesting. Let me Let join in. Crocodile, him is a like he's a he's another kind of like silent, patient, smart character. Like this guy finessed all the bad stuff for years. So like so I like, feel like he definitely, definitely like, like joining, joining the cross guild. He's definitely he's aiming for something. something. I don't know why he's motivated, but Crocodile is definitely looking at something deeper, something, deeper, something more far ahead. And that's why all three of them decided let's create this cross guild. Let's start putting bounties on Marines. Like first of all, that's that's actually amazing. Like I love that. I want to see all the Marines bounties. I want to see Gar's bounties, Akainu's bounties, every one of them. Like that's actually genius. Yeah, I never thought about that. Like I never thought. Like I actually never came across my mind. That actually caught me yeah, off guard, yeah. like it just makes it just makes everything so much more interesting. Like, you know, what are the Marines, uh, fucking um, uh, bounties and all that shit? And like, I wonder, like, who who like, do you think big big uh, big news Morgan is like the one distributing and all that stuff too? <laughs> big news big clearly news doesn't care about the world government, so it, it might actually just be him. Like, this guy clearly doesn't care. He's not afraid of them. As long as the news, this guy's going to deliver them. But like, well, like me, the, the opportunity, opportunity that this gives for like, like, like Oda has uh, reigned himself in, is to actually, actually introduce strong bounty hunters. That's, that's one of the aspects that I always hate about One Piece. Is like, who's actually going to pull in these high tier bounties? Not even just the young one. Who's actually ever going to pull in a commander's bounty? And not even a high tier commander. Someone like Snack. Who, what bounty hunter do we know is going to pull in Snack? None of them. So that's like, this is actually an opportunity to introduce strong bounty hunters. Like, imagine a bounty hunter out of nowhere hands in Momongaru's buggy. That'd be amazing, and let's introduce a new factor that might actually be strong. Yeah, this is a really good opportunity for Oda. But all I know is that it's going to be mad toxic when the bounties come out. Yeah. When the bounties come out, all the power skills is going to pull up and be like, Hey, yo, example, why is, like, you know, Fujitori's bounty higher than fucking Big Mars? Is Fujitori's higher than Big Mars? Yo, it's going to be toxic. That's all I know. But I'm pretty I'm sure, sure Buggy's, Buggy's using the same type of bounty system, system that, that uh, Doflamingo was using in Dressrosa, like the star system. system. Like star the one star, star, two star, star three star, four star, five star. Because that's how you, if you see, look at the posters, you would you could see stars on them. Like you saw a couple of Marines with like two or three stars on them. So I think Oda's not going to make the make it the same, so he's like kind of differentiating it. Differentiating it by making it a star system. These Marines are worth five star, this Marine is worth one star. You know how One Piece fans are, bro. It doesn't matter what system they use. They oh, definitely. Number, it's going to get another crazy. number. It's going to get crazy. Like, they if Akainu gets, gets five stars, they're going to be like, I, I, I already I, believe Akainu's a struggle, but they're definitely going to be like, Akainu's above every uncle just for getting five stars. Yeah, it's, uh, people are going to be chatting. I mean, hey, that's just more content for the later future. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah, man. Uh, like, uh, uh, next topic I wanted to talk about was the film Red Spoilers. Spoilers. Have you guys read any of them? No, of course. Of course. Definitely well, interesting. Yeah, yeah, we've been yeah, telling me and Lon to talk about that shit. All right, okay, good, good. good. So, yeah, so, like, uh, if anyone doesn't want to be spoiled for film Red, this is your chance to head out. Uh, we're just going to discuss uh, the canon facts. I, I just want to discuss the canon facts. The canon facts that were written by Oda in the... Uh, volume, uh, volume uh, four, billion. four billion because a lot of misinformation is being, is being spread out about this entire movie movie being, movie being canon. canon it's not it's exactly, it's exactly like strong world where oda wrote a one shot where about shiki's backstory where he escaped uh, impel down 
where he where fought he Roger, fought. that was that just that one shot was the cannon part. And again, again Oda's written another one shot, four billion, 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 that's the cannon part. part. The movie, the movie itself, itself, anything that, that happens in the movie, movie is not movie canon. canon. All we All know that's canon so far is that Shanks might actually be a celestial dragon. It's not confirmed, but he was found on God Valley 38 years ago as a one-year-old baby by Roger and Rayleigh. Or he could be, he could be Rox's son, no cap. He could also yeah, yeah, we've been yeah, talking, we've been talking talk about that. So yeah, those two those theories two are actually seeming a lot more prevalent right now. Celestial Dragon or Zebek's son. And if he's Zebek's son, it just goes into the trend of adopting your enemy's children that one piece seems to have. Uh, Whitebeard adopted uh, Ace. Garp adopted Ace. Like, it just seems to go and follow that trend. So this might actually be true. But like, how do you feel about Oda making his daughter actually can? I don't really mind that. It doesn't really break any kind of like even in the flashbacks of like in Fusha Village, it's not like we saw all of Shanks' interaction. Like Shanks have been going there for back and forth in the village for a couple of months now. So we only saw a couple of their interactions. We only saw really their final interaction. Like the last week Shanks was there before he finally set it up for good. So maybe before that, Uta was there, she's chilling with Luffy. It doesn't really break any canon. And it's not like she's a broken character where it's going to break scaling. So it doesn't really affect any, any of the story to me. I just think it's just, it's, it's just, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a hater or nothing. I just think it's useless. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know what impact, unless you got some crazy head and impact that we just don't yeah. know. But like, I just don't see what an impact draws. It's just more time for these things. I mean, I definitely agree with you. Right now, it's seeming very useless. Like, why was this added in the story? But like I said, it just doesn't impact the story for me, so I just don't care. It's like she wasn't even added at all anyways. And the hairstyle's a bit too crazy for me. Like, I know One Piece goes crazy with their designs and all that, but just because they usually do a good job with having the parent and the son or the child daughter have some similarities, you know, to the parent. And I do not see any similarities here. And so, I don't know. With, uh, with Uta and Shanks? Yeah. yeah. They're not, well, Sh- I'm pretty sure, uh, they're not related. U- U- yeah, they're not related. Yeah, that's what right. I was going to get to because I actually have yeah. all the spoil every every single. Oh, so they're not even related. Really. No, yeah, they're not. Really apparently, I, apparently I, I, the the whole crew considers they like, considers her as their like daughter, their daughter. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's what I was going to bring up in a, a, another spoiler because I have all the spoilers screenshotted on my phone right now. But I'll just go on to the next one. Like it says right here, uh, Shanks is bounty twelve years ago during chapter one when he met Luffy was one billion, uh, four hundred million. How do you guys feel about that? 12 years ago when you met Luffy. When you met Luffy, when he got his arm taken by the Sea King, he had a 1 billion, 400 million bounty. He was a $1 billion man. That's not bad. Yeah, no, that was definitely, that was definitely, it's interesting because I also thought of like, why is he just like, like roaming around going like to like towns and all that, you know, has having that big of a bounty and all that. But I mean, that's what I'm, I feel like he was recruiting Yasop. I actually feel like that's why he was in the East Blue, just to recruit Yasop. Well, we saw of well, like when he recruited Yasop, we saw he already had most of his crew there. Yasop was just one of the final pieces that he added as a commander. He thought out Yasop like he literally said, "I've been looking for you." So that might have been it. that might have been it. That definitely okay, so then I guess we got to talk about how Shanks is also a mastermind. Okay. There's a couple there's a masterminds that are in One Piece that yeah, are, yeah. like we like say mastermind a lot, we throw that word a lot, but there's only a select few of actual masterminds in One Piece. Number one, Blackbeard, we know what he did. You have Shanks, we know he's on some mysterious shit and he's like connecting dots on the low key. And we got, yo, you don't want to, you know, we talked about this. Buggy's on that tier. I'm sorry. He's on that tier. He's that guy. He's a weird boat. He does it in a weird way, but he's on that tier. But Shanks, I want to talk about Shanks. Yeah. Hold on. Just to add to the list, you got to add Ben Beckman as well, too. Ben Beckman? Okay. I feel you got to add him because he he's, he's, he's Shanks' right-hand man, and I feel like he just gives him, like, you know what I mean? Like, and he is the him and Shanks work the together. I'm seeing, when it comes to, like, just plotting shit. Personally, that's what yeah. I just feel like. Yeah, I would say he's the smartest man. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. in the East, 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 East yeah. Yeah. yeah, like Shex, like, like he's like, definitely he's been planning something. Like, like this guy, this like, guy, like everything, plan, every bro. information we hear about him, it's like, it's like what is his goal? Like, I at first I thought I understood his character. I thought he's a balancer. He doesn't. He's not aiming for the One Piece. He doesn't want the One Piece. He doesn't want the destruction of the Marines. He like the revolutionary does. All he wants is balance. Like to keep as many 
uh, just to keep the status quo until the future Pirate King, uh, like Luffy, comes. But no, yeah. it's seeming like that's not his actual goal. It seems like he's setting up Luffy as a rival. It feels like he won. Like he he literally groomed Luffy to be a potential rival for him, so he can go for the One Piece himself. Like it's it seems very weird. I don't understand Shanks is right now. Uh, nah, you're on something because bro, and so many people don't understand Oda. Because the, the way it is, you know, the first time you start watching One Piece, you think it's just going to be some kiddish pirate shit, you know? And in every anime, you know, every anime has that Shanks-type character, you know? Like, the mm-hmm. meds or, you know, the guy that does it, I just thought, like, the Jiraiya and, like, fucking Naruto-type shit. You know, he's just trying to, he's in the sidelines, you know? He's chilling, but he's strong. He's tough as hell, you know? He's tough as shit. But... We all we thought all Shanks is just going to be just chilling on his Mihawk shit, does not doing not nothing. But we know Mihawk, he's probably playing this some shit too. too. But you see but you Shanks, see Shanks. Oda, Oda does something does like, like, okay, okay everyone forgot about Shanks, Shanks is still a pirate. This guy's still a pirate. This guy's still moving like a pirate. Don't just think just because he's smiling and kicking and shit, he's just chilling. Nah, this guy's a pirate. He knows what he's doing. There's a reason why he got that fruit and stole it from the CP0, dude. And there's a reason why Luffy ate that shit. I'm telling you, that shit was not a coincidence. I'm trying to... Why would he leave a precious fruit that he just stole? This is a mythical Zoe. Yeah, it's a precious ass fruit that a CP0 dude had to ship. It was on the boat and they stole that John and he left it right beside a dude like Luffy. And it's not like he didn't know Luffy at that time like that. Like, like they've been, been around, around you know for yeah, some time they know each other for a couple yeah. months yeah. now at that point yeah so yeah, they, so know, they how know how luffy be like greedy he be marching and shit like he's also like, like a hungry type shit. shit so you're leaving a yeah, whole ass fruit right beside him like that's just that's like if i stole like the mona lisa type shit and i'm leaving that right beside a couple of some kids with like paint beside them that can probably mess up the painting and shit you feel me like that's just irresponsible like but we know Shanks isn't on it. He isn't responsible. He's kind of mature. So he knows exactly what the fuck he's the fuck's going on. So you, I'm just did, did y'all hear about the theory? I, ca- I came across some theory. I, I don't know if I saw it on TikTok or YouTube. But there's some theory. People were saying that apparently Ben Beckman was the one who like kind of like push the fruit towards luffy and all that just because like the the chapter in the panel when like when luffy ate and then the scene like where ben beckman like when they like you know like when the when he ate and then like and then like the next panel or whatever it goes to the scene like where like all of them are just like kind of like freaking out type shit mouse open all shit like oh you just ate the devil fruit apparently ben beckman wasn't in that in that panel or something he was like he moved locations or some shit closer to luffy i don't know but a lot of people were just speculating like apparently maybe he was the one who gave luffy the devil fruit or what not, just oh, move he, closer he's towards smart, him. He's smart enough, because, like, the thing, like, okay, if you guys have read the Ace novels, Ben Beckman is insanely fucking smart, and he also knows, like, he, he he's very smart at, like, gauging a pirate's potential. Like, as the first time he met Ace, every time when he heard Ace, he's like, I know what type of character this guy is. He's reckless. He's not, like, he's not, like, he's, like, he, do, he wouldn't make a good pirate. This guy just wants to fight everybody. And that perfectly summed up Ace's character. Ace just wanted violence. Like, he literally just wanted violence. And I feel like he gauged Luffy's potential. Like, I can see Luffy, like, I from his character, like, meeting him. He's smart enough to be like, I can see Luffy achieving, like, a, like awakening with this devil fruit. So I could definitely see Ben Beckman being the orchestrator of this. He's smart. He's definitely smart enough to be pulling this off. No, yeah, that theory was definitely interesting. Just because of the whole factor of how he's, like, you know, super smart and all that stuff. And then I was getting, like, some, like, type of, like, eyes and vibes and all that at the same time. So, like, I look you fuck with that theory. It's definitely interesting. I mean, Oda doesn't say nothing for no reason. So the fact yeah, that he's, he's one of the smartest dudes, you know, yeah. in One Piece, in certain C, like, I feel like he wouldn't just brush that off as a fact, you know? Every fact that Oda uses to be used for some future reference, that's going to happen. no cap. Like, this nigga will really plant the seed and really wait for it just to grow. Like, you know what I'm saying? No cap. So. so. Uh, I wanted to add a... Couple more uh, film red spoilers. Um, apparently, Shanks, even back then, was known uh, before he became a young was known as the killer of the color of observation. He, this guy can control one's own breath, so he doesn't let his opponent see future sight. Like that's a broken ability. Like that is crazy. Like, and that also, that also like uh, lets us know why he was able to sneak up on a kind because like a kind he, he's literally the only character it seems like who can stop other people's. Uh, observation hockey that's a broken ability to have 
And the fact that, like, again, this is my way of guessing on Mihawk. The fact that Mihawk was fighting a billion uh, uh, dollar bet, a billion belly men 12 years ago, people always used to downgrade me. He was fighting a weak Shanks. Shanks wasn't uh, a young back then. He was worth a billion men. And then he had the uh, ability to counter observation hockey. And Mihawk was still fighting him every day to, like, possibly a draw. Like, this is just, like, as a Mihawk fan, this is the best time for me right now. I honestly feel like people are overrating like the bounties and all that. I honestly wholeheartedly feel like when he still had that one billion four hundred million dollar bounty, that he was still tough as shit like he is right now. The only yeah, difference yeah. is that he didn't have the territory that of like Yonko to make him boost up in the ranks and have him the um, bounty increase and shit. I definitely agree. I think, I think he was like I think Shanks back then. Like yo, white beard. Rivaled Roger. Why they would not say your duels were so legendary that they shook the entirety of the grand line? He's not saying that about no category level nigga. He's not saying that about no king level nigga. Yeah. Like you know, you look at how Whitey was talking about the Admirals and Marine Corps. You guys are all young squares, upstarts. But look how you talking about Shanks and Mihawk. Legendary duels that shook the entirety of the grand line. Like he put respect on them. Like, no, like, these guys were definitely not commander level just because they had a billion berry bounty. No, like, I mean, look at that point, I think, was as strong as an animal at that point. I mean, look at Katakuri. The reason why, like, the first time we saw Katakuri, Katakuri was the first one billion dollar bounty. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you feel me? And the main thing, the main ability Katakuri had was his observation forcing ability. You feel me? So, clairvoyance. So, so when we see now, we're like, that's the craziest shit we ever seen. We thought that the, that was gonna break one piece. We're like, bro, how the fuck yeah, yeah. you're supposed to beat that? But now you look over here on the arc we're in and a lot of people have future have, sight. Yeah, if you don't have future sight at this level, I don't think you're beating anyone. Yeah, yeah. I don't have future sight. sight. The admirals have future sight. A yeah. lot of people have future sight at this point. So because because a lot of, of, yeah, a lot of One Piece people will believe that future sight is just a new thing. But think back to Maureen Ford, where Vista and Marco both try to slice Akinu, and Akinu's first thing was, "Oh, they're using hockey. You guys are hockey users too." But then people are like, "Oh, this is a plot hole for Oda. Like, how come they use hockey? How come they use hockey and they didn't slice Akinu?" No, Akinu just had the future sight ability of Katakuri the same way Katakuri dodged the attacks of mm-hmm. Luffy Akinu did the same thing with Vista and Marco it's just it wasn't introduced at the time that's it and I remember when Katakuri was first introduced in the community it was a horrendous period I remember people were like he beats Kizaru Kizaru like I remember uh, King of Lightning used to say that Kizaru fights in a two linear way he definitely beats Kizaru Oh, that was right. People were we know King of Lightning is bad, man, so we don't see the people were gassing Katakuri up at that point. So I was like, yeah. but now I'm actually happy people are starting to realize Future Sight is it's a very powerful ability. But Katakuri is not even the top in Future Sight. In the I don't that's even think he's top five. It's the first time we've ever yeah. seen. It. So that's why we're like, so crazy. It's like they ignore what Rayleigh really said. You're going to encounter people, not a person. You're going to encounter people. Rayleigh's really definitely encountered this before. I feel like Rayleigh really has. Has future sight. Like, has any top tier has future sight. Like it's, it's like like kind of said, hockey over everything. Basically, like, you need top tier hockey in every category. You can't just specialize in one like category does. And that was categories uh, we he only specialized in one. You need to be good at everything. Like Luffy is going to be a hockey mo- uh, master, conquerors, armament, future sight, the admirals, Kaido. They were all like that. But category that that, that, was, that was his downfall. Just one aspect of him was overpowered, but the rest not. Nah. But yeah, but yeah, Shanks, Shanks having, having the, the ability to just counter that, that, damn, I, I, did I, I, I just, I just, this just keeps gassing. Yeah, that's really, that's really crazy. Well. That's, that's great the ability right there. there. But yo, just like, just to bring things back, where like Luffy, I mean, uh, Kaido, no, sorry, not Kaido. When Shanks was back in, like, you know, when he first met Luffy, like, if his <laughs> bounty was that high, one billion, like, I'm still, like, I'm still always, like, go back to this scene, like, like, why did this nigga really let that, that fucking, what was it, that monster, whatever, like, take his arm off? Like, I know he could have easily avoided no. that. Oh, yeah. We know why. We, we know why. That's a big thinker. He thinks ahead, bro. Okay, okay, okay. I can agree with that. Okay, me personally, I have a 
Yeah. Me personally, yeah. I have two yeah. answers. Answer. One, One, he just allowed he just it to happen. happen. He just to motivate Luffy. 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 We're motivate Luffy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. let's be honest. That's, that's a narrative. narrative. That's a narrative that's ex- uh, explanation that works that now because we know the entire the entirety of the story of One Piece now, like most of it. But realistically, we know why it happened. Oda was not planning that far ahead at that point. That's literally just what happened. He wasn't, for he, wasn't for he wasn't planning for these niggas. He wasn't planning for these niggas to be like yeah, shaking nah, nah. entire islands at that point. I don't, I don't know, know about that. You know why? Yo, yeah. Alabasta was supposed to be an end game arc. It was supposed to be like an end game type of arc. Like the world was supposed to be like five more times to it. I don't know because when he was questioned about his arm, about which enemy, yeah, took yeah he that betted arm, on the new world. But like I said, he betted on the new world, bro. Oda's just a master. Yeah, Oda's just a master of integrating, like making things like he couldn't have made it work before, and like integrating new information to make it work perfectly. But it works. He knows how to work. Yeah, he makes it work seamlessly. Like Oda's very good at that. He makes it work seamlessly. Yeah, if I can understand, like, because I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't put it past me that that's a new thing he added because he did say it was, it was supposed to be short. Shorter, shorter, this was longer because the warlords and all that. that. But the yeah, thing yeah. is, if he can make, can it, make work it work and it fits well with the story, story I got no got complaints my way. way. But if I yeah, see yeah, it as yeah, like an yeah, actual yeah, flaw yeah, that just yeah, makes zero, zero sense, sense, then I'm yeah, like, yeah, okay, okay, that's true. That's because true. when yeah, hockey was first introduced, like the advanced hockey and all that, like past people were always like, yo, that's a big plot hole for Oda. Why didn't they use hockey in the Marine Ford? Why didn't Ace use hockey in the Marine Ford? I'm pretty sure hockey was, it was a big thing in the Marine Ford. They used it. It just wasn't invisible. It just wasn't invisible. They used it every, like, even there was mentions of hockey literally. Okay, you, every time it was used, people would literally say, oh, he's using hockey. It was them hockey users. Like, they would always make sure to point out these people are using hockey at this moment. It would just be just weird, weird as fuck if he randomly just had, had black, black arms, arms introduced with characters. Yeah, yeah. People would be like, what the fuck? What is this shit? But you see, Aki was great. Like, 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 we were looking at it through Luffy's eyes. Aki was mysterious back then. We didn't have a full grasp of it, so that's why we did see the black arms. We didn't see the actual shock waves, everything. But we realistically know that was all being used on Marine Ford. Exactly. So you can see it in both ways. You can see it as a way of Oda evolving and adapting, or Oda actually having the ability to do a long-term foreshadowing and bring back from that happened in the past and the future. As long as it works. If it doesn't work, we do call him out because he's still human, you know? So he's five hours out most of the day. I wouldn't be surprised if he misses a few things, but like, is what it is. Well, here's one thing that might go into your point, Sleepy, on my Shanks. Just I have much of my smile. Another, Another thing from uh, volume, volume 4 billion, billion that was translated, Oda, Oda says, says uh, like Oda, Oda himself Oda says, says, Shanks has his own plans for the new era. I don't know. I, I think, like, Oda just wouldn't just mention that, like, offhandedly. No, he mentioned that for a reason. Shanks has his own plans for the new era. This new era he's betting on, it's not for Luffy, it's his own plan. Like, he's doing this for his means. Well, I don't. I wouldn't be surprised with this whole with this whole thing going on with Shanks if Shanks and Mihawk reunite at some point. Yeah, yeah. Some I'd love to see that. I would love to see them reunite. Yo, I just thought. Have... No, no, go ahead. Yeah, go go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go, go, go. I cut you yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say because like we don't really see Mihawk's like potential goals and shit. You know, the only time we ever really do hear about Mihawk the first time is with Shanks. And it's about greatest swordsman, all that shit. We don't know the journey he took to even get there. We don't know like what grind he had to go through, what obstacles he had to go through, what enemies he had to defeat. We just know he did a lot of duels with Shanks, and that's how Shanks got famous from dueling with Mihawk. You feel? But we do know this guy traveled all the way to Shanks the moment he saw Luffy on the poster, and he says it brought him back like a story he told me from back then. So, so it means that Shanks and Mihawk still be communicating with each other. Yeah, they definitely, definitely have a YB or Roger type of relationship where like, where, like these guys are rivals, rivals, but they're but definitely, definitely comrades rivals. at the same time. Like, like Roger like said, said, though we into garb, garb, though we may have killed, each, almost killed each other so many times, I trust you as much as I trust my own crew. It's basically like a brother. It's a tad bit tighter. The only way I'm saying it's a tad bit tighter is because their goals, like at least from what we know, should have crossed against each other. Like Whitebeard yeah, and Audrey, yeah, they both they're, want Kai Park and her both want to be the most free person within the sea. So they're, you see, oh, Whitebeard wanted the freedom to have his family always safe. Roger wanted the freedom to just do whatever he wanted to figure out everything that he needed to do. 
Boy, I can't understand what you mean. Like, them, like, they, their goals definitely clash a little more than Me, Hawk, and Shaq. Me, Hawk, and Shaq, they're not even moving on the same pathways. Me, Hawk is in his own corner. Shaq is in his own corner. They're moving separately, but they're still, like, at the top. That's what I'm saying, like. So if a duel, like if a duel with Mihawk and Shanks ever came to be, I would not be surprised because you know for old times' sakes. But if that shit happens, it's fucking game. I'm just that saying. would be amazing if like Mihawk just like he's like I'm bored right now. Zoro's uh, is uh, like he looks at Zoro's bounty. He's like, I right, let me get warmed up. Let me go fight Shanks. Let's fight. Let's fight a, a, a ten day battle to a draw. That'd be amazing if they did that. Like he's like, oh, like, oh Zoro's Zoro. almost there. He's Zoro. almost at the top. Let me go do Shanks to get ready for that. I don't know. I'd like a duel for Shanks and Luffy and Mihawk and Zoro. Oh, I, I, I want that Shanks and uh, Luffy duel too. Like this, uh, I've always felt like the interaction between uh, Shanks and Luffy would go. They would meet. They'd have some uh, a light duel, like not a to the death, but they'd have a duel, and it'd definitely be a high death, extreme death fight. And then eventually, whoever wins, Luffy will try to return the hat. But then Shanks is gonna be like, nah, that's you. That belongs to you. This is your mark now. You've done with the straw hat more than I ever have. It's your. It embodies who you are. And Shanks will keep. I and then Luffy will keep it. And I know Shanks will. Shanks and me. Uh, Shanks will go on his way. Eventually, me Blackbeard get yeah, killed. Bro, I was thinking, yo, what if low key Shanks and and uh, Buggy they're working together? Shanks and Bug. Yeah, like what if? I feel like they do communicate. I feel like they do communicate with each other. Bro. Cause you remember yeah, when Shanks did go like to the girl say and they said, "Oh, I want to mention a certain power." What if he was talking about Buggy? If Probably. he was, that's Probably. hilarious. Rob, because yo, he's the guy that's made the craziest move since like that time that he saw yeah. the girl say. Honestly, like people are underestimate just how crazy the move Buggy made was. Cause bro, bro, people are, because, bro, because it's just he's such a such funny a character funny that everyone, everyone thinks it's just a funny incident. Like, oh like, yeah, that, that, that is a, that's literally a game changer. Like, like yo, kid said himself, the world's turned, turned upside down because of this one move. Bro, bro. I'm, just I'm just saying. saying like, like, at the end of the end day, of day, with the whole buggy shit, shit, people, people really, really brush off the fact that Shanks really pulled up to the door, say, not just like like pulled up like you know in his regular fit. This nigga, this nigga pulled up, pulled up in, a in a hoodie, all suspect as fuck. In a yeah, he hoodie. major off vibes. So, so sketch. sketch. The niggas are like, ah, you know, they just respect Shanks or some shit. Nah, it's not that. Cause yo, the way that's another so comfortably yeah. without them all hostiles. The five gores, they, they were not hostiles. They were, they were like, oh shit, Shanks is here. They were like, oh yeah, Shanks. It's like I pull up to my boys' crib. And and that's why I, 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 I that's why I always lean on he might be a celestial dragon. Cause look how much lenience they gave to Do Flamingo. And Do Flamingo was a former celestial dragon. Remember his family oh, yeah. removed themselves from the celestial dragon. Imagine Shanks. He was just a born celestial dragon, but he never actually like his family is still a high level family in the celestial dragon. Like it, it would explain why they just have so much respect. Sengoku literally said, "I'm only allowing this because it's you, Red Hair, that's asking this." They, the Gorus has said, "We're only allowing this meeting because it's you, Red Hair." It's always the same thing because it's you asking. They just say, "We wouldn't allow this if it was any other Yako." If Kaido had pulled up, the Marines would have fought. They would have fought to the death. They would have kept fighting. Big Mom pulled up. They would have kept fighting. Because it's Shanks, they're like, we respect you. Like we respect you. We're gonna, we're gonna like hear you out. We're gonna be cordial with you. Like he's like Shanks is giving me too many advice right now. No, but on the topic of Shanks, I'm gonna pass it off the line just because I know we probably gonna have a different opinion. But we gotta talk about the incident in the chapter where Shanks. Pulls up on Green Bull from the distance with the hot. Ah, man, man. Yeah, this game. What, what, what we think about that scene and what it means no, for the All I gotta say is, I know you guys are gonna argue. I know, especially Henny's gonna argue, but the nigga paralyzed him. The nigga paralyzed him. Oh, uh, I don't know about that, bro. Uh, is, is that all? Is that all? Can I, can I go? Go ahead, bro. That's all. I know you're gonna chat. Uh, I know you're gonna chat. Chat it up, bro. Go ahead. Like I said, this is not me. Be just being an admiral. Okay, I have an admiral fan, but I love the admiral more than I love the young girl. Only young girl I really like like that, where uh, that I really love above the admirals is like Blackbeard. 
But other than that, I am an Animal fan, but, but let me tell you this, I hate Green Bull. His character is actually shit to me. I actually don't yeah, yeah, like right. what Oda did to his character. The Green Bull that we were introduced to in the Reverie feels like a completely different character. Just how nonchalant and chill he was. I like that Green Bull. This racist, uh, kiss-ass, like, dick-eating uh, Green Bull that we have now is actually fucking annoying. Like, I don't like what Oda did with his character. So this is not it's me just trying to blur it. Like, uh, just blur Green Bull. No, this is just me being straight up. He was not paralyzed. In the next panel, he's moving. He was just shocked because, like, and like, again, he didn't mention red hair and stuff. Said the red hair pirates. Let me tell you this. People are always like, oh, he, he still came into Wano ready to fight a bunch of young boys. No, he came into Wano expecting to fight a bunch of rookies again. No matter how much cloud they get, people still keep considering these guys are rookies. So, like, they're not experienced enough. So imagine so you already have to fight these quote-unquote quote unquote rookies that just beat two young goals. Green Bull was ready for that. They're not they're full not strength. strength. You know, they're so not they're as not experienced as a full young goal. They're, they're just, like, like, getting, like, like healing, healing up. up. Let me Let fight them. them. He was ready, he was for, ready that. for that. But then, but then you add another full Yonko crew, who's, who's gonna, gonna do, do that? that? Who is who fighting an entire, entire Yonko crew? crew? And, and, and this, this is not is just any Yonko crew, this is the most balanced Yonko crew, as was stated in the story. They have shanks. Like, if even... No, no, let me one, one more point. Like, even, yeah, yeah, even no, no, no. Kaido, what, even, even, okay, okay the okay, only characters in the in verse that I see that not running away from the situation are Kainu, Kainu and Kaido. Kaido. Mm. It was just because those, 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 those niggas are just too stubborn, they're bullheaded. Anyone else who's smart, they're just retreating, a tactical retreat, dragon would retreat in this situation. Blackbeard would retreat. Kizaru, Kizaru actually might not, because Kizaru... Him is flip floppy. Sometimes, sometimes he's about the action. Sometimes he's like, you like, know what? Let me just chill. He's always very hard to uh, like gauge his, his character. character. But like any, like any smart, smart character would really just retreat. retreat. Like, like, like look at it this way. If, if it's, it's Kaido, Kaido in that situation, in that situation. Him, by him by himself is uh, against Shex is already a high death fight. fight. Now you want him to fight his entire crew? You want to fight Ben Bagman, who's arguably Admiral? Who would do that? So of course he's gonna run away, and of course he's shocked. He's not, he wasn't expecting the red hair pirates to just be there out of nowhere. That's an unexpected wave of hockey. Anybody would be shocked in that situation. So that's why I don't take it at all. Shex is just body any animal without even touching. No, that's not what that was. That was just Greenbow being smart. Like that's that's a smart retreat. And people keep bringing bring this up, but they forget Blackbeard after wanting to square up with everybody at Marie Fort ran away from Okainu. Alone, 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 kind of in a bunch of Potter Marines. Marines. Him and his, his entire, entire crew, crew, including Shiryu and all of them, ran away from Akainu. But people don't mention that. That's all I'm going to say about that situation, though. I'll let, uh, I'll let you know. I mean, it's a quick thing I'm going to say. I'm not even going to talk on, on that. What I'm really going to talk about is this one point that I know, like, the One Piece community, like, keeps trying to, like, highlight. It's a fact that when Greenable was talking about them, like, when he was fighting, like, Yamato and all them, he was like, like, if Kaido was still was running this shit, I would even be here. You feel me? Like, I would even be, like, trying to roll up on you guys. I'm going to roll up on you guys because that guy got defeated and shit. He didn't mention Big Mom in him. He said, Kaido. You feel me? Okay, but you... Hold up. Now, you know why he said that? People take it as, a, this is what the One Piece community is saying. Like, yeah, yeah. like, oh, Green Bull doesn't think he can go against, like, Kyle and shit. Like, no, he thinks he can only beat down on these people. You see, the reason why he said he wouldn't pull up if Kaido was still running shit, because they forget about what he literally said before saying that phrase. He's saying that the fact that Wano was under control from a tyrant like Kaido was a good thing. Because he was talking about the higher people, the higher tier, always got to keep the weak below. That's how the world works. That's literally what he said. And what was Kaido doing? He was keeping Wano under his feet with an iron fist. You feel me? Like and that's, probably, yeah, that's how he those, keeps the balance. Like, there's a reason why the Marines are, like, the world government is so heavy on balance. Like, they they never took action against the Yonkos. They're like... The world is we're, we still run the world. Yeah, we can let these niggas have their territory in the new world, but we still run the world. They yeah, because the whole generation of Yonkos, thinking that these niggas were not making any moves. The only people that have been making moves recently has been the worst generation. These Yonkos have been uh, like just like they've just been like ah, what's the word? What's the fucking word? They've just been tyrants. Just take just yeah. They've just been like no, they've just been quiet for decades. I like, haven't made any moves. Like, think, like think, how is it that Marco met King for the first time? That just tells you how these guys don't fight each other. They don't make any big moves. The first big move that was made was Shanks meeting up with Whitebeard. 
and Kaido trying to go to Marine Ford. That was the first couple of big moves that Zonko made in a decade. They don't make big moves. So that's why the world government was like, we're okay with that. We're okay with Kaido staying there. Green Bull's not going to go be like, let me go attack Kaido. No, the world still works in our favor. But now that it's Luffy and Momonosuke in charge, it gives people like, it, it goes against the world government's views. Like these people have freedom now. They can go out into the world. They're not. They're no longer going to be isol isolationist. They can actually like reveal two issues. One was a country that is, has a lot to do with the voice entry. The world government is not just going to allow that that this country is like open borders. So obviously that's why Ka like, Green Bull is like, oh, let's not let me where we would never attack Kaido. And even if it's old, he's scared. Like you could also say the same thing about White Beard and Shanks. None of them attack Kaido. Like they yeah, 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 killed their yeah, men, yeah. Odin. He killed their men, Odin. Yeah, none of them attacked him. Why? Because the lack of information. They the like we don't know what's going on in these top tiers. Never attack unless they know every detail. They they've been too they've been too quiet for too long. Yeah, and I just want to point out that Admirals and Yonkos got different fighting systems. Yeah, is Admirals are an organization while Yonkos they got their own crew and they establish their own rules. But in the way that people expect these admirals, as I've always heard this, it's like, if the admirals are always so equal to the Yonkos, why didn't they just come in Russia and kill all the other Yonkos? Or just team up and jump on the Yonkos? But it doesn't work that way. Because One Piece isn't like a Dragon Ball Z where we got one strong-ass character and he just has to fight the other strong-ass character to resolve who's the strongest. Nah, admirals work in a way about efficiency. They want to see what's the smartest thing to do, the most efficient thing to do, and the most, you know, less stressful, more like. And that's why they always jump niggas. That's why they always go through a direction because they have an organization they're trying to run while still having the bad shit happen in the shadows to keep the balance. That's they're not going to. They're not going to just rush in. The Yonko will file the Gorosei's approval. The Gorosei likes the Yonko. They're like, I. The the Gorosei will actually wouldn't have minded. Marco being a Yonko, they don't they mind the Yonko towards the like, it keeps balance. It keeps the other, the, any new rookies in line, any new rookies that might try to like, take the world in line, and they keep, and that we're still in charge of the world. So the, 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 the animals are never going to attack just Russian with Father Gorosei's approval. That's just idiotic yeah, yeah. for them. The only, the only person, there's literally, because you know Fujitora is still letting Dofamigo yeah, yeah. run his shit, while well, clearly seeing the evil shit Dofamigo did, but he just stood by there. And that's why yeah, people are like, oh, why didn't Fujitori just kill Doflamingo? We know why. He got protection. He on his shit. He got celestial ties. So he can't really do anything out of order. No, like, you don't anger the higher power. But the only, the only this is a, this is a, yeah. I've ever seen just go cross the line is I can like, Yeah, because he's about that action. Like, literally, if Akin is chilling on his off day, just sipping some tea at the shop, and he sees Luffy just walk out, it does not matter if he was to join that tea. He's throwing that shit out. He's going to try to kill him. Exactly. He actually doesn't care. Like, he just... Like, other admiral would ask the fleet admiral to go say, do you want me to engage? Akin who's like, nah, I'm engaging if he sees that. And Kizaru's in a way that he's only gonna go. He's like a mercenary. He's only gonna go yeah. with the order. If he gets, if he gets, it, from if he gets it from Akainu, he doesn't care. Yeah, if he gets like, it that's what I love about Kizaru. Like he's always ready for it. If Akainu asks, like, "Yo, you want me to go handle it? I'll go handle it." Yeah, but if not, he's just too like carefree to even care if he doesn't get the order. That's kind of like me. If I was in One Piece, I'd be a Kizaru because And my manager hit me up and be like, "Yo." Okay, okay, he's supposed to work on this time and this time. He's been the schedule. I'm gonna go. But if he's like, yo, there's three days next week if you want to pull up. And it's not part of the schedule. I'm gonna pull up. I ain't fucking pull him up, bro. I'm gonna go smoke my shit. I'm gonna chill. Oh my guys, and just chill. I'm gonna skip. Well, yeah, people just keep forgetting, like, the, the Marines, this is an actual army. They're an organization. These, this is an elite army. They're not just a random ragtag group. They're, they're not like the revolutionaries. The thing Sabo, Sabo did, did, just attacking Mary Jawa to save Kuma, a, a Marine could never do that. Mm. Like, he, he literally disobeyed his commanding officer's order. No Marine is doing that. Because the, the revolutionaries are just people that, like, are fighting for a revolution. These are just people that Dragon is like, you want a freedom? Join me. Marines is actually a tight organization. But yeah, that's what, like, it makes sense everything Greenbow did. He was like, yeah, he, he went above and beyond. He's like, 
Oh, uh, like, oh, Akainu yeah. told him, like, yeah. scope yeah. everything. But he's like, yeah. let me go yeah. a little above yeah. and beyond. Yeah. But attacking yeah. Shanks, too, that's going too yeah. above and beyond, yeah. and that's stupid. Yeah. They're not trying yeah. to lose yeah. one of their, yeah. their biggest yeah. assets. And, and he, yeah. told, he, told he told Greenbow, I can't even told Greenbow, quote, unquote, don't overdo it. Yeah, don't overdo it. That's literally what Akainu do it. Don't overdo it. In his head, just attacking, like, aware, like, like we're not Luffy and them, was, was like, that was something he could handle. But attacking but Shanks too, that's overdoing it. That's overdoing it for any character. Yeah. So that's why I understood exactly what he did. I wasn't mad. And again, like, I'm always a believer of admirals relative to Yonkos. Not every admiral has been the, built the same. Him and not every Yonkos is built the same to me. I have Al oh, Kiji and Kizaru firmly above Big Mom. It's not even a question that they're above Big Mom. But I have them. I have them relatively the same level as Kaido, and I have Shanks above both of them and Blackbeard too. But then I have people like Greenbow and Fujitora below Big Mom, and I actually have Greenbow below Ben Beckman. It's like they're not all built the same. These are all different characters, but they're all top tiers. They're like every one of them fighting would be a high to extreme them. Yeah. That's interesting. Interesting. I mean, if we're gonna get the topic about like, of like, you know, tears and all that stuff, because I know you dropped some TikToks and it's, uh, you know, oh, it was yeah, a little controversial. That, that, uh, that was the next topic, but I also just want to get a little bit more film red spoilers about like Yasop, uh, Ben Beckman. Oh well, yeah, that is group. true. Yasop's. Uh, so like, I don't know if so. Yeah, I, I, I have it right here. I have it right yeah. here. Like, uh, as a, that his hockey Yasop is crazy though. Yeah. His title was the chaser, and he frightened people. And uh, his sniper skills are the best. He can see future sight continuously. He's not like Katakuri, who was just a couple seconds out. He can keep seeing the future. And we always knew, like, we always predicted. If anybody's going to have top tier observation, it has to be the greatest sniper in the world. And this just makes sense. That's how he wins the duels. That's how he wins the quick draws. Because we know that the guy's gonna fire. Just looking, just looking at this information pisses me off by where Usopp is as a character. It actually it just makes me angry. I'm like, he had so much potential. But post time scale, Usopp has just been, other than Dress Rosa, he's been like the worst straw hat to me. I mean, some, I have to like bring it up. Like, as a topic, I think Oda forgets about certain characters. Yeah, he definitely does. Yeah. Like, Usopp how do you see that one? Bro, we saw that one feet I was talking about this with Lauren. Like, we saw that one feet of Usopp when he got that crazy advanced observation hockey at that kind of distance. And I don't think we've seen that any other time as a character Never. in one of them. That was a crazy. Do you know how long that distance that was, bro? That was a few cities, like, fucking far, bro. Like, people don't realize, like, this Rosa is a country, bro. There was a lot of cities past that before you can actually see. All that potential? Yeah. Uh, I, I just I hope, just like, hope, like, first of all, I've always had the issue of Usopp using, using a slingshot. I just feel like it's fucking lame. I get it. Oda, Oda wants, to wants to keep some lightheartedness light in the story, story, but can this guy get a fucking gun or, like, look at Yasuo. This guy looks so raw with his sniper kit. Usopp gets a gun. Just get a gun, bro. At least a crossbow. At least a crossbow. Exactly. At least something, but that slingshot, and I hate the way all his attacks now, it's basically not even him anymore. It's not him, actually. He doesn't have to aim now. Because the plants are just doing all the work. The plants, he can aim it anywhere, and the plants are just going to go and attack all his enemies. It's not even about accuracy anymore, except that one thing he did with sugar. All his moves are no longer about accuracy. I hate this plant shit he added. Him, three times, he was definitely a better character, and I hope Elbaf brings back that old type of piece up, because he's really been lacking lately. Uh, yeah, that, that was it on Yasop, uh, Lucky Roo. He's the chef of the crew, which we all assume. Uh, he's, uh, good he's good at using arm in hockey. His muscles are strong, strong and flexible, flexible, and he and attacks he like a like bowling ball. Basically, he spins, he spins himself, himself and rolls around. around. Yeah, that part definitely caught me off. Like I was, I was definitely double thinking on that. Like I don't know how, how I feel, feel about that. I don't know how I feel. He's about basically, that. Uh, he's basically like Choji. You know how Choji fights in Naruto, right? right? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah so that's uh, the thing. That's the thing I was getting. But like, that's the thing. I'm just like, I don't know if I fuck with that though. But I guess I gotta see. But it like, kind of makes know. sense for his body type, yeah. 
Yeah, no. It makes me sense. I don't know if I fuck with it, to be honest. Yeah, see what I'm saying? I, mean, like, I watch Black yeah. Panther more with Lucky Lou. Because I always thought Lucky Lou was the most, like, Ben Beckman, you can see he's mysterious, but I always thought Lucky Lou was the most, like, interesting. And, uh, we, we all know Lucky Lou was the most about the action crew. Like, they said he's the fighter of the group. Oh, the, like, he's the fighter of the group. He's the most, like, he's always the one ready Bro, for he, action. He, about that, I, he was the first nigga to kill someone in one place. Yeah, yeah. About that I, action. I, I, like, I, I, I've, always, I've, always, I've always believed he's the one that took Kit's arm. Like if anyone's going to take his arm, it's either him or Bam Beckman. One of those two. I think they're the only ones that are ruthless enough to just take it. No, hundred percent. Because the way Ben, uh, not Ben, Lucky Roo killed that first person. Yeah. Was, yeah. It was it the was first. So it was the first wrong. person we seen, and and Oda doesn't even kill people off like that. Like you know, on the reg. He had to so. remind you these guys are pirates. That ass. And next, next we got, got Ben Beckman. Beckman. Not information we got about him. Uh, he's, he's very, very good, good with good hockey. hockey. And yeah. as, as everyone, everyone has been theorizing for years, he has he hockey has bullets. bullets. And apparently he's also, he loves women. He's very popular. Say that, say that again. Say that again. He has he hockey has bullets. bullets. He's very yeah, good with yeah. hockey. And he has he hockey has bullets. bullets. And he's very popular very with women. women. Yeah, we he's always assumed that with the hockey bullets. And you can like, we just always assume about sex is food. These guys are hockey people, man. They're actually the top tier hockey crew in the verse. I mean, they have to because he didn't want Luffy. You see, he said that thing about Luffy. If you eat like a fruit, you can't join my crew because you can't. Yeah. So, like, sex has always been a bug. Like, I, I, I want to swim. He's always been a hockey guy. And it also just really clashes well against Blackbeard. Like, Blackbeard is like the anti, uh, antithesis of that. Like, him, it's all devil food. Let me overwhelm you with my broken ass devil food powers. And that's why I feel like their matchup, those two crews going at it, is going to be amazing. No, it's going to be crazy as fuck. I feel it's just a deeper meaning as to why Shanks, like, didn't want to have no devil fruit. Yeah. He just... He just he, maybe even... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I, I was just gonna say, like, honestly, because I saw this is in my theory. I just saw it with someone else, but you know they're all looking for laughter and shit. Yeah. Nah, I feel like laughter. The only way to actually get into laughter is with a key from someone from the D clan, since it's from the best times where the D people were. So I feel like Shanks is kind of like in the theory. It's far fetched as of now. I'm just saying, like, I'm giving out the aspect of the theory. It's like Shanks is using Luffy since he knows he's a D and he knows his back history that he can use him to unlock to get into Rafter. And he knows that he's going to feed him that Joy Boy fruit. And Joy Boy is going to be like the mass. Something about that fruit is going to open Rafter. I don't know. I feel like he's really using Luffy for that still reason because I don't know what other reason he's wearing that big ass fruit that fucking big ass CP0 he just stole that shit all the way to like a little bar like it makes zero sense yeah it actually doesn't and then as soon as he awakens that's when he's like saying oh time to go for the one piece yeah Yeah. the correlations they're just they're just all like you know what I'm saying they're all stringing together and just I don't know it's definitely sus you know what I mean Yeah. yeah yeah It's like the it's timing like the is just so, like, it's not like, it can't even be coincidental. The literal time where Joy Boy comes to life, Shanks is like, okay, I think it's about time to find the one piece. As if they could always find the one piece at any time. Like, no. Yeah. They're like, I don't know, it's a bit weird. Uh, finally, like, to end the film rest spoiler topic, last thing I wanted to uh, discuss is that very controversial scene that we, we've all heard about, but... Shanks, quote unquote, making Kizaru and Fuji to our right away. First of all, I've seen that scene myself. Well, from the uh, uh, people that have filmed it from the from France, because they them the movies already come out. And oh my gosh, people are misconstruing the scene. So it's the same thing as the green bull thing. First of all, no, no one like they were surrounded by fodder. Like they they only had fodder around them. The only other worthy ad, uh, uh, marine with Fujitora and Kizaru was Momonga. So Shanks released to the wave of hockey. Momonga falls on his knees, but like people are confusing with Kizaru. No, that's Momonga who falls on his knees. If you look clearly, he has the mustache and everything. And that Kizaru, he has one drop, a drop of sweat on his, on, his, on the side of his head. Just one drop. That's it. But again, this is Shanks. That's that's the Yonkwa's enemy. Who's not getting a little, you know, a little getting a little angsty about this? That's a worthy opponent. 
but he's still but he's smiling. smiling. He's already still smiling, smiling throughout that. He's still nonchalant. He's willing to keep going. Fuji Tora is the one that says, let's retreat. And we all know Fuji Tora's personality. This guy's no, all about no, no, saving no, civilians. He says, we have to leave. Us fighting them right now would put too many innocents at risk. He's the one who urges Kizaru and them to leave. But yo, to your point with the drop as well on Kizaru, it kind of makes sense on why Kizaru and Akinu both had that confused look when they saw Shanks. Because now that you've explained with that um with that leak that Shanks is like the he negates the future sight of other people. Yeah, people don't so expect his attacks. They didn't expect him to even pull up. So usually an admiral will sense someone pulling up out of a high tier of Shanks because their hockey just blooming all the time. But the fact that they didn't see, like, expect it, sure, you will get shocked when a big player like Shanks pulls up out of nowhere. And when he just uses a big wave of conquerors on you, like, it's going to shock anyone who's not expecting that. Like, come on, he wasn't part of the plan. It's like, what? There's a now, I was fighting these guys now, a nigga like Shanks was pulled up out of nowhere. Okay, now that changes things. And even even if we're not including Shanks' ability to counter a future site, we also got to, like, remind ourselves again, every Marine with them was dropped to the ground. They were all fodder. Mamonga was on his knees. Now it's just Fuji and Kizaru. How do you expect these people to fight the entire Red Hair group? Izaru and Shanks is already a high death fight. They're handling each other. They're holding each other up. Then Fujitora basically has to fight everybody else. Ben Beckman, who we think is Admiral Level, who rivals Shanks, quote unquote, and then Lucky Ru and Yasop. How is, are these two meant to handle that? Of course, the smartest move again is to retreat. No, nigga, except Akainu is literally the only one who would keep fighting in that situation. Him and Kaido. That's it. Mm. Oh my God, man, the Shanks uh, fanboys just keep blowing these things out of proportion. Like, I, I, I used to love Shanks, but his fans recently have really made his character, like, very annoying to me. I'm fair play. I still rage. I would rage Shanks yeah, every time. I rate his strength. Again, I got him top five. I got Shanks top yeah. five. I still like, rate his like strength. That, bro, that hockey shit, I just learned from the leak about him being able to negate a future. Yeah. That, that, that's some sick-ass shit. Like, I fuck with that. Yeah. But I just don't fuck with the fans that are just gawking them off every chance they get. Every like, time. Bro, dude can take yeah, we, on two Yonkos. We got one in the chat right now. Yeah. Uh-oh. Hey, bro. Such your bitch ass <laughs> of the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me just say this. Shanks over me, Hawk. That's all I gotta say. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, uh, now that you talk about that, let's talk about the recent... Uh, Top uh, 30 uh, videos I posted. I posted them in three parts on my TikTok. Y'all go see it if you if you want. Hanny D. Gastino, you can find me there. Uh, first, uh, like, let me look at my list real quick. Let me pull up, pull up the list. Uh, I, I know these guys, they don't agree with me at all on most of the list. I know a lot of people don't like my list. A lot of the comments didn't like most of my list. I get it. I have a controversial list. I've always been a person, like, I really followed like i like i think narrative is over everything i do feel like if a character has narrative use oda is going to use them like oda doesn't care about power scaling he only cares about how he can use these characters for the story so that's why like I i'm just going to go over my list at 30 let's go for 30 to 21 first to discuss that i had killer at 30 kobe at 29 lucky ru at 28 actually no sanji at 28 lucky ru at 27 katakuri at 26 king at 25 marco at 24 Sengoku at 23, Yamato at 21, and Boa Hancock at 20. Uh, no, Yamato at 22, and Boa Hancock at 21. Now, how y'all feel about that? I mean, you already know what I'm going to say. Personally, I fucking hate Kobe, and I don't think he should be on that list at all. At least for now. At least for now. At least for now, because we don't know shit about him. A lot of people hate him. I get, I get it. It means it's just, it just makes sense. Like, out of every character, Kobe, like, other than Blackbeard and Luffy, Kobe had the highest growth rate in the series. Like, people underestimate how fast this guy grew in strength. Like, look at him in the beginning. He was below fodder. Like, Makino from Fushu Village could have been that nigga Kobe. That's how weak he was. And in just, like, the, what, the seven, eight months from East Blue all the way till uh, Annie's Lobby, he's able to use Soru uh, and uh, uh, the other uh, six techniques. Like, that Kobe in Annie's Lobby, I definitely could have seen him beating uh, Kuro, Buggy, uh, Don Krieg, and maybe even Arlon. I could have seen him beating all the freaking East Blue villains. And taking it, it took Luffy 10 years of training 
to reach that type of level. And Luffy was older too at that point. Kobe was younger. Kobe was 15 when we first met him, 15, 16. He's younger and he's growing at a faster rate. And then he unlocked hockey at a much faster rate than Luffy did. Luffy's been a fighter his entire life. Kobe's been a fighter for like seven months, already unlocks observation hockey. And then two years later, being trained by literally the Marine hero, Garb. And we don't think he's going to be in the top 30. Come on. And he has way more narrative uh, going for him than Smoker does. Smoker, obviously, he's done in story for me. Like, he's not fucking doing shit anymore. Kobe's literally meant to be the Marine guy. So I definitely see him. And he's going after Boa Hanka, who I, I rate very highly. I don't think it's going to be a one-on-one fight. I think it's him and Helmepo against her. But still, like, I have to put him in my top 30 for me. Like, around Taylor's level. I don't think that's a bad spot to have him. Like, Taylor was good, but he wasn't overwhelmingly strong. Where, like, I can't see Kobe being there, too. Oh, yeah. Any other spots in the list y'all were iffy about? I forgot which one it was. But... I think you. Uh, I think you were upset about Marco over K. Uh, uh, oh, oh no, Marco below uh, Yamato and Boa Hancock. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, I don't see any way, shape, or form that Marco is gonna be under Boa Hancock. Let alone, uh, you see, I can. You can argue a point for Yamato, but I don't see Boa Hancock being uh, ahead of Marco. I just okay. don't. Yeah, I'll, I'll argue Yamato first, and then bring up why I rate uh, Hancock so highly. First, Yamato, my, uh, like in my opinion, it's, it's very clear that he's above Marco. Like, Marco went all out against King and Queen, and they had like no scratches on them. Again, it's very impressive that he'd be able to hold them both up. That's why I put him above King. In a one on one, I think he's beating Queen in extreme diff, but he went all out and he didn't put a single scratch on them. They were good. They were literally all good. That's his best feat, too. Like, that's crazy. And yeah, people can bring up he fought the Blackbeard Pirates, but no, this guy lost overwhelmingly, very overwhelmingly. Yamato, on the other hand, was, yeah, you can say she's holding, like, Kaido was holding back, but no, Kaido himself said, more stop holding back. They clashed. Obviously, Kaido wasn't using the strongest attack, but the attacks he was using, he was definitely trying to kill her. So he tried to kill her, and she still held him up for a time until Luffy was ready. She's a conqueror, too. And we know how conquerors are. Conquerors, they're all getting boosted at this point. She has conquerors coded. She has advanced conquerors. She has a mythical devil for like everything is going for Yamato for her to be above Marco to me. And again, she's a new gen character. Marco has hit his peak. Marco is not getting any stronger. Yamato can get stronger. It's very obvious to me that she's above him, but I can get why people don't agree. Boa Hancock on the other hand, that's just how I've always viewed her. I've always viewed that she it was she was the second strongest female in the verse after Big Mom. I still view it like that. She's an endgame character. She has all three types of hockey. She's the queen of an entire island of hockey users. On her first voyage, just from literally one voyage, literally as soon as she stepped off the stepped off her island the first time, the Marines threw her an eighty million berry bounty and offered her a roller position. She has so much going for her narratively that I've always just rated her very highly. And again, end game characters I always feel like are going to be stronger. But yeah, that's why I have her right above Yamato because I just feel like she is a captain too, so that matters for something. And she has all three types of hockey also, just like she does. But I can see why you wouldn't rate her highly, so I completely understand. Bro, honestly, I think it's just the way with styles work, because styles make fights, you feel me? Yeah. There's always style matchups in one piece. Sometimes you could say, oh, maybe the other way would work better, but usually Oda does a good job with the style matchup. Yeah. Now, the thing is, the same way why they paired up Marco with Kizaru, it's not because Marco is the same strength as Kizaru. It's just that the offensive ability of Kizaru, the only way to really negate that is with it's a Marcus high tier defensive yep. ability. Because that's his whole thing, his defensive ability. He's like the support character, just a high tier one. He's a healer, he's a doctor, and he is the defense. Because his whole fruit is basically it can regenerate at speed. Like, he took a whole attack from Kizaru and he had regenerated at speed because of his fruit. You feel me? So... yeah. He goes actually to fight, you know, he actually has to touch you. You feel me? He uses the speed blitz to hit, plus the armor and hockey and all that. It's no real lethal attack like Ace, where he uses fire ability. So yeah, like Marco's fire is non lethal. It can't, it like, it's just concussive force, basically. There's exactly. no burning to it. There's no burn. If anything, it's more of like a healing tactic, you know, he uses fire to heal. People, like, his right? fire is just like basically a normal punch. It's just a punch. Yeah. It's just a, a force that's hitting you, nothing else. Exactly. So, the thing is, fighting two people with that type of ability, 
I feel like it wouldn't put any type of force or damage on them. It would only meant to be holding them off, which is what he was doing. So yeah. he was holding them off. And a one-on-one, now that's kind of different. Yeah, I, yeah, like I, yeah, like I said, stand. I agree that he beats King one-on-one. <laughs> Even that, I wouldn't know, to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. With King and Marco, I feel like it'd be a battle of stamina at that point. Yeah, it's an extreme death fight. Yeah. Because even, like, the fact of, like... Because you have to do, like, some shit that Zora did of figuring out King's ability about if he has a flame on his back or not. Or if not, because, bro, when he got... Like, when he started flying using that flame and shit, I forgot what it was. Is it when the flame is out? He's more fast. Yeah, but he loses durability. Lose durability. Bro, that durability he had was insane. People do not think about that shit. That was some insane ass yeah. durability. Well, that's but, that's uh yeah. that's uh King's obvious weakness. If you can figure that out, it can become very easy to overwhelming. Like his weakness is so just it's there, it's so showy. He has but such I'm, a obvious he's... weakness that anybody good enough or smart enough can take advantage of that. I'm not going to lie, at that time, at that specific time, I still find it weird that King even resorted to the speed blitz yeah. and shit, where he, he could have easily beat Zora with the durability. Because Zora was getting the speed. Fucked. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't need the speed at all. I don't get why he did it. But hey, I guess he needed a way to you know, yeah. go along with the story, but hey, it all worked out. Now, now I'm going to go from uh, 20 to 11 on my list. At 20, I had Zoro, 19, Rayleigh, 18, Shiryu, 17, Garp, 16, Kid, 15, Law, 14, Green Bull, 13, Ben Beckman, 12, Sabo, and 11, Fujitora. Now, I know both of you had a very big issue with me putting Law and Kid above Garp. Uh, you guys still feel that way? Say that again? I, I know, like, last time we talked about it, you guys had an issue with me putting Law and Kid above Garp. You guys still feel that way? Like, I like no, kind of sway you. All right, all right. I don't Actually, got I, above, above Garp in any way. Like, for me, like... Yeah. I got his potential above yeah. Garp, but I don't think he reached that potential yet with his fruit. Okay, so... so yeah, that's like, the same way as me. The, yeah, when it comes when to it comes old men, like, like, they don't they lose strength, strength, but what they do like, lose is stamina, and stamina is very important when it comes to high-tier fights. You cannot keep doing these big attacks without getting tired. And that's what I mean, this old man lack. They lack stamina. Here's so, the yeah. thing. I can see where you can say that with Kid, but I do not think Law got the best type of stamina. He doesn't, Ooh. but his stamina is still people underrated. People actually overblow his stamina weakness. He was fighting a lot during Dressrosa and while injured too. He fought Dolphy multiple times during that same day. Law has good stamina. I think he has better stamina than Garp. I don't see Garp fighting as long as either of those two. Again, I have them on the same, basically same scope of level. I see them, I see Garp dishing out just as big a stack as those two did against the big mob. But the thing is, he can't do it for as long as they can. And that's why I give them the edge. And also, again, these guys, they're Luffy's rival. Next time we see them, they're going to be head and shoulders above Garp, in my opinion. Like, these guys, they're going to keep rising. And I feel like after that fight, again, hockey blooms in tough situation. So why can't we, like, we could assume that after this fight, these guys got stronger from it. They got stronger from the, from the big mob fight. So yeah, that's why I have them above Garp. And I'm a Garp fanboy. I used to have him number 11, but recently I've started putting a couple of people above him. But it's like, damn, they're growing while he's staying at the same level, but his stamina is not as good as he used to be. So yeah, that's just uh, how I feel about that. And I also know you guys, uh, you, 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 you specifically had a problem with me putting, I think it was Sabo above Ben Beckman. Oh yeah, I definitely have a problem with that. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, I, feel it. I can understand why Ben Beckman's got a lot of hype. The moon to Shanks' son. He has, uh, okay, and then there's also the Corey rivals. I'm pretty sure the actual quote was his influence can rival that of Shanks'. It's never his strength. He's the moon to Shanks' son, but they said his influence can rival that of Shanks' or the amount of fear you can bring to other people. Again, there's a reason I still put him above Green, but I put him above a whole, I put Ben Beckman above an Admiral. So that's, I'm clearly giving him, giving him his credit, but I can still, I still put Sabo above him because I always, in my head, can it? Sabo was always meant to be the guy that takes over a dragon. I've always had dragon dying, and Sabo was actually meant to be, you know, the flame of revolution. He's the flame emperor. He's meant to be the actual one that flames the revolution, that flames, like, the, 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 the path to freedom. Like, they, they, they're even saying it right now. His influence is starting to supersede that of dragons. That's insane. So I've, that's why I say that like, Sabo's potential is clearly higher than Ben Beckman's. Again, these 
Top tier but, characters have already reached their peak. These new gen though, they're gonna keep growing. So that's why I have him above Van Beckman. But the thing is, you're 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 making the list based on current. You can't like I thought it was just doing current. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is current, but like. But, but now, but now you're kind of like integrating just potential into it now. No, if no, you're no, doing potential, was, then the list could be completely yeah, different. Look, if I was integrating full potential, I'd have Subway number two because that's where I have Dragon. But no, I, I'm just saying because that's how high he'll reach. I feel comfortable putting him one spot above Ben Beckman. And again, this is an extreme diff fight. When these people are like one or two spots above each other, that's still extreme diff. I just feel like Sabo has more going for it. Crazy devil food, crazy hockey. And honestly, I feel like Sabo could be a conqueror low-key. He could be a conqueror. That, that's my head cannon. You, like, obviously, a lot of people are, are going to believe it, but I feel like he could. He has everything going for him. But I understand why people don't want to put him above Ben Beckman. Again, being compared to Shanks is a very big flex to have. He's the smartest man in the East Blue too, so he he's definitely has high battle IQ, very smart fighter. He's definitely a smart fi fighter than uh, Sabo, because Sabo is fucking reckless. Like, I used to think he was a smart brother, but honestly, I'm starting to realize he's just as reckless as Ace. They both do the same thing, rush in headstrong whenever their emotions get high. They're very reckless fighters. Oh, yeah, Sabo so, yeah. just got more technique, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, he's just learned more technique from Dragon Ball. He's a fucking reckless guy. He saw Kuma and just threw everything out of the water that Dragon Planet said, let me rush in. Exactly like Ace would have done. Hmm. Oh, man. I just need it. The fact that there's just the hype with Ben Beckman, I know what we've seen from Sabo. I know his hockey's nice. He bloomed it, even that as a later age. He, like, evolved it really nicely. He took mm -hmm. on a clash with Fujitor, which I still think Fujitor wasn't going all out. Yeah, and definitely he not. He'd have to kill the people just Rosa. So that's how his ability works. Yeah. So, I just think oh, yeah. I still didn't see a level that puts him even close to Shanks' potential. Because if yeah. we're saying that Ben Beckman is close to Shanks' potential, I don't see Sabo in that area. But the thing is, like, Sabo's hockey has bloomed again. Even before he got the the, the, the the flame flame food, he was commander level. And then after he got it, he couldn't use it. Like he, he, he was using it pretty efficiently right away. And then we give him a couple of weeks or a month of time. He's definitely uh, earn, uh, like uh, learn more proficient, like proficient ways to use it. And he's fought two admirals since then. Again, hockey blooms in tough situations. These top tiers, they've been too stagnant for too long. Okay, so now we're, any talking, big moves. But now we're talking about current trouble. No, but this is current Sabo. He just came from fighting two admirals. His hockey has definitely bloomed for that. You don't fight two admirals and don't bloom. So that's yeah. where I'm putting it. Before but he was commander that's level, and then he fought two of them. Yeah, of course it's hearsay. But that's any top, uh, uh, top tier list. Any uh, tier list is going to be uh, hearsay at the end of the day. Because none of us really know the definitive order, except Oda. Because we haven't seen any wow. of these niggas actually make any moves. Oh, uh, for my top 10, I have Big Mom at 10, Kizaru at 9, Aokiji at 8, Luffy at 7, Kaido at 6, Shanks and Mihawk tied for 4th, Blackbeard at 3, Dragon at 2, and Akainu at 1. Now this one, I feel like it's going to get a lot more people heated. I know me and you personally agree on number 1, or we agree on the top, two, uh, on the top 3 spots. Uh, me and you sleepy, but I know Line doesn't. Uh, Line, how do you feel about it? <coughs> Hey, bro. You know I don't fuck with that nigga. I, I can, you know. Yeah. I could definitely, yeah, I, I definitely want to, like, personally, me, I don't want just, everyone has different list type shit, you know. That yeah. nigga, I can, you know, just varies from number one to number two. Maybe number three, but, like, that's, it's, it's basically number one and two. Personally, I would yeah, put him yeah, number yeah. two, but, you know, that's just, that's just me. Hey, that's, yeah, that's still that's mad still respect. Mad I, I still I like still. that. I, I would not mind a kind of one number two. I could see him being number two. I just personally have him number one because again, I feel like he's literally after Blackbeard is dealt with, the world government's the last the last villain. So Akainu, as the figurehead for the world government, is gonna be an endgame fight after after Blackbeard. That's why I have him so high up. And I feel like, as I said, I feel like Sabo's gonna replace Dragon because Dragon's gonna die. And who do I have potentially killing Dragon? Akainu. The way Akainu was speaking about Dragon and Marine for, it's like he has a vendetta against him. He's been trying to kill Dragon. I've always been like had a headcanon in these guys. They came up in the Marines together, and then 
him dragging uh, betraying the Marines or something, like just rubbed Okainu like a really t- wrong type of way, and that's why he has such a vendetta against him. That like, he's gonna be the one to actually kill him, and that's why Sabo or Luffy are gonna have to like Sabo and Luffy are gonna have to get a lot of shit back in blood for Okainu, man. Ace dying, Dragon dying, like so much shit. Right, mm-hmm. that's why I have Okainu number one. Well, what about Mihawk and Shanks tied at fourth? I know a lot of people don't like me putting Mihawk so close to Shanks. And a lot of people would have me put him clearly above Shanks. How do you guys feel about that? I'm not angry about that. Like, I can get them, like, 1A and 1B, yeah. you know? So it's like, if you put them ahead of each other, you put Shanks over Mihawk, I don't complain. If you put Mihawk ahead of Shanks, I won't complain. It's whatever yeah. it's an opinion. Yeah, yeah as long as they're way. tied, as long as they're tied, yeah, yeah. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah. Me, I yeah, never complain either way. I've, I've, I've seen lists with Shanks one spot above Mihawk. I don't mind that. My only issue is when people try to separate them from more than two spots. They can, to me, they can never be more than two spots apart. Because I've always had them as the bona fide only equal. You know how Nekomushi and Inorashi were just equals? Like, they could never beat the, uh, the other. I've had, I have Shanks and Mihawk just like that. Like, Oda has just portrayed them as such rivals. In no other way he's portraying other rivals. Like, yeah, these guys are both have the same. Like, they're both Gemini. They both have, like, like, Oda doesn't just give birthdays randomly. He both gave them a birthday sign where they're Gemini, you know, twins. Or was it Pisces? I forgot which one it was. The, 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 the sign that means twins. He, like, he, he, he said that for a reason. He put them, like, he, he said, yo, these guys are legendary duels that shook the entirety of the grand line. Yeah, uh, Mihawk is waiting for someone stronger than Shex, but they were either implying that. Shanks isn't strong enough to kill him, but at the same time, he's not strong enough to kill Shanks. So that's why I have them bona fide equals. I feel like they fight 10 times, every single fight will be a draw. No definitive winner. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Any, uh, any other like, notes y'all want to make on the list? Like, uh, Luffy mm. above our Kiji and Kizaru, y'all fuck with that? Yo, yo, Ema, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to what, how, how would you uh, make your top 10 list? Yeah. My top ten. Well, I always say after the top five is just kind of guessing, but if I definitely number one. I'm just writing it down as I'm saying. I was gonna say some bullshit. Oh, you're going from one to ten? Yeah, I'm going from one to ten. I'll find it easier for you. All right. So number one, I got Akimi. And notice that my top five, it's all like within high extreme difficulty. Yeah, definitely. Not like, so it's not like it's big like space. space. And that's the, and that's issue, the with issue with people. They think just because you put someone a spot above each other, it means like they, oh, they, they made the film. Nah. For me, it's the same thing. My top five, every single fight is high extreme death. It's like a Roger versus White Bear level fight. As in, these niggas are about to die on death's door after the fight. Mm-hmm. But like, anyway, so yeah. I can do Number two. And we're saying alive, people that are currently alive. Yeah, yeah, current. Oh, yeah. Current. 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 You see, after this topic, my mind's changed a little from last time. I'm not gonna lie. So, I'm not even gonna lie with you. Okay, so I can eat me. And I wanted to ask this like, are we putting. Because we know Luffy got Joy Boy's fruit, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's Joy Boy. But are we are using we Luffy and Joy Boy as the same person or are we separating? Oh, the same person, basically. Same person. Just a form, man. This one is just a form. It's like super same blue to him. All right. Okay. But we haven't seen Joy Boys full on. Yeah. We just guy. I just think Luffy hasn't mastered it yet. Just like he had to learn to master Gear Two, learn to master Gear Three. He still hasn't mastered Gear Five. All right. Well, I'm gonna put. Believe it or not, I'm put Kaido. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. People have been sleep on the shit he he was pulling. This guy he was, was doing a lot. Cabins. He's fighting a lot. He's fighting Kid. He's fighting Luffy, Zoro. Big Mom was just on the sidelines, to be honest. <laughs> they not doing shit. I'm not I mean, at the beginning, he kind of was doing a lot, but then as soon as Kaido went hybrid, he started just doing everything for himself. So. Mm. It's like he took so much tank and damage, and believe it or not, you know how they punch him through like the explosion down there in the volcano. Yeah. I honestly don't even think that killed him. If it killed him, that's stupid. Because he has a magma form. How is it that Lava's going to kill him? If, if, yeah. if this kills him, I'm going to be so mad. Yeah. And they need to mention what happened to those two. She's a normal balloon and he's immune. 
if it, if it does, does kill, kill Kaido, Kaido, that just hypes up Aki Yuno just a bit. Yeah, yeah. It, does. it does. So, so, it, so either, either way, way then, that, that's just how it so works. works. So, so I'm going to put Kaido at the second. And, and third, third, I'm actually going to put... Ooh, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, put Shanks than me, than me. Oh, okay. So you've put, lowered Blackbeard. Put, yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna put Blackbeard to be honest, but I have to stick to my word by saying I need to see all the facts. Yeah. I can see potentially Blackbeard being stronger, obviously, but I just I haven't seen anything as of recent that would put him like as a, like a, a sense of like hype information that puts him on top. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm just going yeah, off yeah, like the yeah, recent yeah, information yeah, you're getting. Yeah. Nah, it makes nah, sense. <laughs> so if so I put Shanks third, third, I just have to put Mihawk right on him. Right respectable. respectable. High five, High I put Blackbeard. Black All right, put Blackbeard right here. At, At six, six, I will I'll actually, actually put, put. This is a this hard is one. Hard. I'm not going to lie, but I'm actually putting Kizaru. Uh-huh. I know you do rate Kizaru very highly. Yeah, I, I'm going to put Kizaru. Then I'm going to put an Aokiji and Luffy Tai. See, but, I was actually thinking of putting Kuzan above Luffy too, but then I'm like, ah, is he really above him? Like, let me just wait and see him next time. Then I can be definitive yeah. if he was above him at that time. Because I can't act like he didn't just go 10 days without him. Yeah. Lonely, People so. underrate that feed way too much. So... I'm gonna put out. You can put whatever order you want. Luffy above Alkiji or Alkiji above Luffy, but I got them like on the seven and eight. You yeah, feel me? Very close to each other. Real. So, at number nine, I'm gonna have to put Big Mom. This bitch. Yeah, of course. At number ten, you got the bitch over Dragon. Come on, man. The I'm not man. lying, bro. I know I want to. I put Dragon on my top before, but it's just that I just to go by my word because in my head canon, this is totally different. Because in my head canon, I always think about like the end time One Piece. You feel me? Yeah. But like with just the facts displayed, mm-hmm. I don't got much information about Dragon, so yeah. I can't even put him anywhere to be honest. Yeah, he might be more mysterious than Shanks, honestly. He is more to be honest. Okay. I, I don't, they're like on the same level of mystery, to be honest. Because we really don't know how powerful this guy is. All we know is that he's the most wanted guy. That's all we know. So, <laughs> but I do see him at the end to be stronger than most of these characters and put him in the top five, actually, potentially top three. Yeah. But so far, I haven't seen zero information in a long time. So for number 10, I don't even know if I'm going to put Dragon. I'm going to put it um, shit. Fuck, this is going to be a hard one. I don't know if I want to put this character, but shit, boy. Who, Benny boy? Yeah, I was thinking I'll put Ben Beckman, but I'm, I'm thinking... Aw, you can't put Benny above Dragon, man. Come I on. Don't, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Because I'm, I'm just trying to save myself out here because, bro, I'm not the biggest Ben Beckman guy, but shit. Yeah, you I gotta think I'm not... One, you got to remember one fact. Dragon is still Luffy's dad. We all that know how true. anime dads are. That is true, but we know orders are troll, so I don't know. This guy always <laughs> just leads people with info. So, I don't know, bro. We always thought that Snack was going to be a major player, then this guy was just some <laughs> stupid ass dude. But, hey, we'll see what goes on, bro. But for now, from what the current facts tell me, this is what it is. All right. Well, I don't mind the list. Honestly, like your top top fives are so like, it's all here to because everyone has a different top five, and most of them I'm not. I, I wouldn't get mad. Well, there was this one underneath my comment. I'm pretty sure line you commented under it. Let me try to uh, go search it up. That would might have been one of the worst t- uh, top tens I've ever seen. This guy definitely needs to go rewatch uh, rewatch One Piece. Well, what was his top ten again? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, where the fuck is it? Damn. Uh, here it is. He said, Kizaru at 10, Law at 9, Kid at 8. Like, just Kid Bro, and Law what? above Kizaru? Yo, nah, that was crazy. No, just keep going. Keep going. I want to hear <laughs> yeah, okay, 
Aokiji at seven. Black that's that's fine. Blackbeard at at, uh, at six. That's fine. Tex at five. Akainu at four. That's fine so far. Luffy at three. That's crazy. Big Mom at two. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! This guy's reading. This guy's. He's reading Mom piece. He's reading Mom piece. My God, who's that one, bro? Kaido, that's at least respectable. But Big Mom uh, and Luffy in the top three was wild. I'm like, I've never seen a list like this. That's actually a horrendous list. No, nah, that's actually that's ill, bro. No, nah, that like, list is have, definitely an L list. Like that nigga was drunk like, or some shit. Law and bid over Kizaru. A big mom of Bubba Kainu and Shanks and Blackbeard. Hmm. Dang, that's crazy. Some people just want a reaction. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Lion? You got a top 10? Uh, you want to throw out? Top 10? Uh, uh, let me just try to have one on top of my head. Okay. I guess I'll go... I'll go from 1 to one to 10, I guess. Or do, should All I right. go 10 from 1 and build the suspense? Uh, uh, either, either way. Either way. Either way. Ah, fuck, I'm going to go one. So for one, I'm going to probably put, I'm going to have to put Dragon or my nigga right. Kaido. Because, yo, right. I could put Dragon there, but we don't know anything about Dragon. So you want to, if niggas want to talk about that, then I'm glad, I, you know, I'm more than glad to putting Kaido there. So me, at number one, I'm putting like Dragon or Kaido. Not in order, by the way. Anyways, number two, I'll put, I'll put Aki, you know. Mm-hmm. Number three, I'll put... At three, at three, I think I'll put Blackbeard. Okay. Th- right. At three, at three, I put Blackbeard, and then for four and five, I'm gonna have to do Shanks, then Mihawk. Yeah. Uh, let's see, number six. Mm. Number six, number six. I think I might have to put. I'm trying to think. It's either gonna be Luffy, Aokiji, or Kizaru. Yeah, that's a, that's that's what I was thinking. I was thinking about probably putting Aokiji number six, then Luffy seven. Okay. Number eight, number eight, I'll probably put Kizaru. Uh, number nine and ten. Hmm. I'll probably put Big Mom number nine. Rod. Num- number 10 uh, number 10 I don't know I guess I'll just fucking throw Fujitora up there yeah, that's that's hard. Hard. like top 10 is like as long as you have these like characters in your top 10 that we all name I feel like no top 10 is honestly invalid as long as the, the, the for me like the top 10 always has to include the three OG Admirals, all four Yonkos. Right now, it has to include Luffy and also include Dragon. So as long as you have those characters, I feel like any top 10 is valid, honestly. I guess, yeah. Pose. Nah, and that was it on the top 10 subject. Um, any uh, closing thoughts before we end the podcast? Um... Uh. It was definitely a fun podcast, you know what I'm saying? The first one was kind of lanky and all that shit, but like, I'm definitely down to do some more on some different topics, other One Piece topics, some upcoming animes too, because you know, I want to branch out to the other animes, but yeah, it was yeah. definitely fun to you know, sit down and talk, because, yo, we already talk about One Piece and all that shit, so uh, you know, that's what we're thinking, like, yo, if we're already talking about this, and we actually have some good points, especially Henny. Henny has some good points. He's very knowledgeable within One Piece and I say, I'm mean, yo, we should just Appreciate do that, okay. No problem. You know, I gotta, gotta give respect where respect's given. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I'm saying we really should just, you know, kill two birds with one stone and share information with the with the community. You know what I'm saying? So, definitely down right, to do this right. again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if y'all have any, any, any comments, you know, any suggestions, you know, we're more than welcome to take the advice. And, um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much for me. So one of my closing thoughts for this, it was fun. You know, we got some shared opinions over here. We got some little bits of disputes, but that's nice. That's what we like. And yeah, we're always going to go on later anime too. Any other new anime, I know Chainsaw Man's coming out soon. So we might dive into that. I read the Chainsaw Man manga. They, these guys don't do it. So they might I dive I was waiting in. for the anime. Yeah, they're waiting for that anime, but we know, like, 
they're gonna have to watch it and read it at some point. Same thing with One Punch Man. I know that shit's hot. I know the manga's hot. These guys don't know. Me and Win for the anime too. Like, they're, gonna, they're gonna have to hop on. Uh, well, yeah, these two guys said, man, I had a great time. I love talking about One Piece again to do this now as, like, basically, like, on YouTube, uh, like, share with other people around the world, potentially. Like, it's just a great experience that we, we love. We love One Piece. We love anime in general. We're, we're definitely going to branch out. Me, personally, I'm a huge Kingdom fan. So I wanted to have more Kingdom uh, content eventually if these guys would ever hop on it. I've been trying to tell these guys to hop on it for a minute, but it's been tough. But if they do, we could definitely do more Kenda content. Not a lot of people do that, so I think that would be a great, uh, great topic, a uh, great topic to be uh, brought on. Uh, we'll definitely take any advice you guys have for us, any comments you'll leave, like any uh, constructive criticism is appreciated, like Lion said. Well, yeah, man, that was it. That was the New Era podcast. Uh, if you ever want to find us, man, I'm Henny D. Gastino. You can find me on, on TikTok under the same name, Lion. Yeah, you can find me pretty much anywhere, you know? TikTok, MTV Line, Instagram, MTV Line. That's where I really mainly be active on, so, you know? Give me a follow. Give me a shout, bro. Sleepy. Well, you know, I don't have a YouTube, but, you know, you can follow me on IG, you know? It's sleepy. That's Sleepy with two Ps and two Ys and a Z at the end. You know, overly complicated it's okay we'll, we'll link all our channels in the in the comment in the description it ain't that complicated they know the <laughs> vibe, bro. but yeah that's all, right, it. all right this was good this was good this was the this was the new era podcast from n 2 meet and matt leave a like comment subscribe everything you know hit the notification bell for more news more more videos coming up man we're just gonna keep it going from there man we're only going off from here all right one time man peace out peace out just to live a better life, life. Can I be a superstar? I don't want no sometimes.